This is the sign of the horns, a curse sign, the two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast, you know. Always, so that's the sign of the horn, and then what happens? Is that it? Well, the other ones, too. Yeah, what are the other ones? The other ones, one of them's the pox sign, that's three fingers extended. A pox on you? A pox on you, during the Middle Ages, this yeah. was... Yeah, oh, yes. But uh, you're originally... You're a bad cat. You well, <laughs> you have to be bad to be good. Mercy. My mic sound nice, check one. Shout out to God Bless Sax Band and to Turner Man 5 YouTube channel. Turner Man 5 YouTube channel help to spice up the intro. And always shout out to my brother D Point for the fresh intro beat. And shout out to every one of you, each and every one. I thank you all for being here tonight. We give all praise. That is due to the one and only living and true, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazarene, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, welcome. And thank you uh, for the uh, super chat uh, from, from Sister Carla. God bless you. Supporting the edifying expansion of the kingdom of Christ. Peace and love and bless you for that. And welcome to everybody who's here. Always a pleasure when God's people get together. Jack the Giant Slayer, Shawnee Dogs, Ned Levon, Roselle 416, Prisoner of Hope, Nicole Beard, Aaron Pardo, Piper Bickham, Ariel B, Leslie E, Anthony and Vis Vicenta. Just to name a few. Cookie Cruncher is in the house. Mr. Shepherd. Nana P. In the place to be. Erica Kings. Our brother 20 below. Natural Sweet Tooth. Checking in from Arkansas. Virginia S. Andy Sierra. Sister Minister T in the place to be in the Rigger family. Ernie Beware. You any kin to Coco. Sister Sheila B in the place to be. Scoville 7. Sister Kai. And there's my brother Reg. Brother Reg is, is cooking up. He's cooking up something. Something nice, y'all. One child, Charles Kevin Liptak. 
Orlando Fuller, DC, Ducha Rowlett, Dento Bean, Chico's brother, Sister Nikisha Moore representing the Detroit family, Detroit Rose Deep, and Sister Rothy Dunnigan, Mr. The Original Old School, Sean M. Read Romans 10, Max Emilian. Sister Chelsea, Sean Thomas, there's Sister Nisa in the place to be, sir. And there's my nephew, Kevin McCall Jr. Good to see you, nephew Kev. That's East Co uh, uh, that's uh, West Coast Kev. And shout out to um, Kev Walker, big nephew from the East Coast. And there she is, Sweet Lady 0512, Sour Man 0516 in the mix. Precise Diff, Jason Follow of Christ is in the house from our Prayer Warrior crew, Off the Boat Santos. He says, I became aware like 10 years ago, was ready to get violent, and Unplug Him gave me good advice. Appreciate it, fam. I told y'all I've been around. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. Shiny Dog says, thanks for the shout out. You're welcome. I was through with it for you knew what to do with it. Rob Tick is in the house. And let's get down to business. Now, if I missed you, I wasn't trying to dish you. And I hope you understand that. I'm going to prop this up right here so I can kind of see. Okay, now, so the W. A lot of folks have been, um, well, let's, let's start here. Let's not worry about what a lot of folks has been, because a lot of folks think a lot of things. But one thing we know is that when researching the NWO, you come up with an overstanding that it's not so much a new world order as it is a return to an old world order, the Babylonian mystery system, or the system run by the Babylonian mysteries or the Babylonian mystery religion, often called the Egyptian mystery religion or the Egyptian mystery system, or the Commission mystery system. Uh, some folks also know it as. The names change, but the game's the same. It's a system established by the fallen who take their orders from the devil, called in Roman tones, Lucifer for light bearer, which is just really a title. And it's not an incorrect, uh, pardon me, it's not a correct title because he is a prince of darkness and bears no light, but this is what uh, he, he becomes known as, and just to speak um, in a way that everyone's familiar with and not get so caught up in that he's Halal and he's Shaitan and he's this and he's that, we like to say what folks are familiar with, especially when we're dealing with the Luciferian world order, which is really the most correct uh, way of putting it, because these individuals who unfortunately run the churches, run the hospitals, run the schools, uh, run the entertainment industry, they run the judiciary system, they run the political system, they run the papal system, which is separate from the churches to a degree. Uh, 501c3, they kind of all come up under the same pyramid. But what I think most folks are aware of is that it is to establish a different world order as opposed really to a new one. It's called a new world order, but as always, the devil is lying and so do his mouthpieces and his ministers. So in truth, it's an old world order, a return to the ancient gods being worshipped, quote-unquote, and, and I say that tongue-in-cheek, knowing that there is only one, one true and living God, but, you know, they were revered as gods in ancient times. In the uh, times of the Romans, they had many gods. In the times of the Greeks, they had many gods. And in the times of the Egyptians before them, they had many gods. And uh, folks will make a differentiation between the Commissions and the Egyptians. That's fine. In the times of the Commissions, they had many gods. In the times of the ancient Sumerians, they had many gods. In the times of the Babylonians, the Persians, 
they had many gods, quote unquote, little g gods. What are these gods that we speak of? If there's only one true and living God, these are truly spirits. Now, one thing that the New World Order likes to do, and one reason it's called the New World Order is because the illusion is that it's new. Follow me now. The illusion is that this is something new that's being established. Oftentimes, that illusion is facilitated through technology, what we call technology, which is a manipulation of materials and metals and electricity. And we tend to think that it, it is some new advancement when everything that they purpose to be able to do, they have been able to do with very little quote-unquote technology. Uh, they've been able to accomplish great demonic feats. And when I say great, I don't mean great as in good. I mean large, extra large demonic feats through the use of ancient magic conjuring. The practice of calling up spirits. You know that you have with your own eyes seen very unique and interesting structures and in architecture. You may even, you know, as I once uh, did. You may even marvel when you watch the Discovery Channel or uh, a channel like that or the History Channel and they show you some mysterious area of the world where the stones uh, or where the, where the architecture was actually carved into the stone and they marvel and they wonder how were these people able to do this with such limited technology? Wink! But you don't often recognize the double think in that they try to get you to believe that in order to do certain things today, they have to have technology. This is a trick bag. And I need you to understand this so that we can get folks back centered in their strength. That's one of the ways that the devil intends to create new citizens in this so-called new world order, which will have new police, new teachers, new religion, all actually old. But again, for the purposes of conversation, to move everything forward, just follow me for a bit. So they give us this false premise that in order to uh, uh, secure this new world order, system that certain technologies have to be in place. Have you ever heard of Jack Parsons and the JPL, which actually stood for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, but people would joke and call it the Jack Parsons Laboratory because despite his lack of formal training, this scientist, quote unquote, was able to bring the United States from a level of being totally primitive with its rocket program into the modern day so-called space age. And it wasn't done through a knowledge of technology. This is why I used to always say I was suspicious of CERN in a different way than most folks were suspicious of it. I was suspicious of it because having been a person that studied the occult for many years, I was suspicious that they were claiming that now they had to have machinery to do things that I know they were already doing and have been doing for thousands of years. They have found ancient calculators. They have found ancient machinery. The idea of technology and machinery and calculators 
these aren't new ideas. We are made to think they are new ideas. That's an important part of the game. Because it keeps us buying into uh, updating our our phones from flip phones to uh, Android phones to iPhones. And then iPhone 6, 7, 8 or wherever they are now. They have to keep you believing that, oh, well, you know, at one time we were using horse and buggies and then we moved on to uh, gasoline cars like the Model T Ford, and then we moved on to uh, muscle cars in the 60s, and you know now we have cars that can park themselves, right? So they have to give the illusion of evolutionary advancement because it's a big part of propagating the lies that establish the New World Order mindset. It is important that they make you believe that through technical advancements, you can reach and even surpass the level of God. It is important that they make us believe this falsehood. It is false. It's not true. Brother Reg, I know you remember when we were youngsters and we watched cartoons like the Jetsons. The assumption was that if things continued to advance at the speed that they appeared to be moving, because again, that's an illusion, but what we were taught to expect growing up was that by the 2000s, we would be in flying cars. And yes, there's the trouble of, you know, how would you regulate airspace and how high up would the cars be able to go and how would you keep lanes and and blah, blah, blah. But again, just if the advancements of technology were really organic and truly advancements, That's where we would be right now. Follow me now. It's proof that there's this illusion concerning technology. The very fact that we're not there. Certainly there is the follow the money crew that will always break everything down to the exoteric or the outside. uh, the, the, The appearance or the aesthetic that... Well, yeah, it's about money. You know, they don't want to get us off of the, the, the oil standard. They want to continue to uh, nickel and dime everybody to death by slowly bringing out certain technologies, getting all the money they can off the iPhone 7 before they bring out the 8, which they already had sitting around when they made the 4. That's true to a degree. Well, that latter portion is true, period. But it's the former portion that we don't see through the way that we should. It's not that we have to wait until man discovers this and discovers that. That's a lie. Because when the fallen came down and they gave mankind uh, technology, uh, they taught him architecture, they taught um, cosmology, they taught astrology, all of the different things that they taught to help create civilization. They gave man the keys to do everything that they could do. Lord God, my tongue and my mind. Many people marvel at Star Wars because Star Wars appears to have this very unique and creative mixture of the ancient and the futuristic, right? Right? I mean, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke, you know, they're on tattooing. They're walking around in robes and sandals like ancient people in a desert climate. 
as if, you know, they were in ancient Uruk or Mesopotamia or, but well, you know, or somewhere in the quote unquote Middle East, which is a misnomer and something only created by the digging of the Suez Canal. But my point is there is this mixture of the ancient. They're using swords. That's ancient. They also use guns. But the but the weapon of choice for the Jedi is this ancient weapon. Darth Vader is accused of having an ancient religion by the guy that he choked up using the force choke. We assume this to be or one of the reasons why Star Wars is so iconic beside the fact that it's heavily laden with crawling in ideologies and occult themes one of the things that makes it so iconic is the look this mixture you know the the way that they speak again you know um taking a page from the way that the old Biblical reenactment movies like um, Ben Hur or biblical era type movies like Ben Hur and um, the greatest story ever told and the story of Moses with Charlton Heston. They all had these English accents that for some reason would make you think that they were giving you a more authentic depiction of ancient times when old English is only old compared to new English. But they do all of these things in the Star Wars films to give it this archaic feel while at the same time having futuristic aspects like flying ships, uh, uh, laser beams, and uh, 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 cities in the sky like Cloud City where Lando Calrissian was the boss. It's not so genius when you understand that the Brotherhood have a grasp of time and space that's different than what we are allotted because they are in commune with these ancient spirits. These ancient spirits that they conjure because witches and warlocks in the brotherhood, the higher up the pyramid they go, the more they're taught about the art of conjuring. They consult these spirits who give them inspiration for ideas for movies and toys and cartoons and fashion and everything. And those fallen angels are with, of course, the assistance of their human counterparts, the Brotherhood, they are all slowly, step by step, incrementally guiding us into an ancient Babylon world system as it was in the days of Noah. So in so doing, they have to give us the illusion of evolution. Do things evolve? Certainly, some things do evolve. Certain cooking techniques have evolved. Certain techniques in the recording of music, Brother Ridge can testify, has evolved. Some things have evolved, but creation does not evolve in the way that we were taught uh, through Darwinism and uh, science and, and whatnot. And technology does not evolve in the way that we have been taught to believe. You have to believe that lie, though, so that you can believe in evolution and so that you can believe that you can reach Godhood through technology. The first thing that they want you to believe is that they can reach Godhood through technology. Who? They who? Well, the scientists, the scholars, the geneticists, the biologists, the psychologists, the psychiatrists, the geologists, all of the ists of science. 
They need for us to believe that they are gradually discovering things. The astronauts, <clears throat> pardon me. They need for us to believe that they're gradually coming to these discoveries. Why? Well, it helps to cloak it helps to cloak the existence of the fallen ones. The fallen ones don't want you to look at the book of Enoch and have an understanding that they've been here and they've been guiding man and man's definition of civilization. They've been shaping man's defi definition of civilization from the very beginning. All towards their end game, which is destruction through recreation. Recreation, write that word down. If you have a pen or a pad around, recreation and recreation are spelled the same, but pronounced differently. Isn't that interesting? Part of the spell of spelling. In order to recreation, <laughs> the devil is providing us with recreation. In other words, he wants it to appear as if he's, he is creating a new system, new beasts, new human beings, quote unquote, so to speak. His recreation is through recreation, <laughs> to wreck creation, W-R-E-C-K, creation. He has brought about recreation, recreational drugs, recreational video games, recreational sex and fornication, recreational entertainment to give you, to enter you into a tame mentality. So he must give you the illusion that things are advancing. His game is a one step forward, two steps back game. <laughs> because as a person like Brother Reg who works um, on technology to create music can tell you with every new advancement that does make some things easier about recording in the studio, there's still some degradation. Something is degraded. Something is taken, taken away that will cause your music to suffer if you don't keep some of the old instruments or some of the old implementations around. Most people don't. Most people believe out with the old, in with the new. When they get something new, they throw away the old one, thinking they have no use for it. When CDs came in, many people got rid of their record players. Then, eventually, we began to learn, wait a minute, the CD sound is really tinny and digital. Really trebly too. It's not as warm and wide and thick as the sound of a record. It sounds really thin. It, sure, it's super clear. See, that's the one step forward. Oh, well, it's much more clear. See how clear it is? That's the one step forward. So, too late once you've thrown away your records and your record player. You got to just keep going forward into the quote unquote future or into the direction where things are evolving or else you'll be left back. The cars today. Oh, this is a, this is a, this, this car is a half a million dollars. It's beautiful. It looks like a spaceship. What's it made of? You let that 2021 pretty thing cruise down seven mile and make make a wrong turn 
in front of a 1980 Malibu. And that pretty thing is going to shatter like glass. Fiberglass. So, but, but, oh, it, oh, is it fast and pretty? And it can park itself. It can talk to you. It remembers all your phone numbers. It has a built-in GPS. The one step forward, two steps back. You see this all throughout quote-unquote technology. Because by and large, it's an illusion. They don't need a giant hydro uh, uh, particle collider to open up portals. Thirteen naked long booty witches in the woods can open up portals and bring out a giant fallen angel. So what are they really doing? And again, I'm not, I, I'm not discounting that these devils do indeed provide the brotherhood with advanced, or what we would call advanced uh, sorcery, dressed as technology. And when I think about CERN, I think about CERN Unos, and I understand that this is advanced sorcery, and they and they are likely. They are definitely not likely. They are applying ancient sorcery techniques to some of their technological understanding. But at the end of the day, you can have auto-tune all you want. But the devil knows that the true power is in someone who was blessed to have a beautiful voice. A beautiful singing voice from the Lord. And he will always desire that natural thing that he cannot create even through his own technology. The devil understands this. So do the members of his brotherhood. So. While many people. Are, you know, they have reserved themselves, pardon me, they have resigned their power, they've given up their power, and they have resigned to believing that everything that the devil promises he's able to do, he can do through his technology. Why do you think they have to lie about having been on the moon? Why would Elon Musk have to lie? Why do people who are really good at graphics and editing and video editing, why did they find problems or why do they find problems with all of his launches? That they don't look authentic when put under the scrutiny of folks who really understand video editing and graphics. Besides the Van Ellen's belt. It's because they have to keep up the illusion of having power through technology that God does not allow them to have. I maintain that the entire purpose for green screen technology and CGI was never to entertain us. The entire purpose for the Marvel craze and the Star Wars craze and all of the other crazes that relied upon CGI, it wasn't so that you'll have a better time at the movies. There was a grander purpose. Do you feel me? Melody's Child and Key? Somebody who can really sing and put together music? If you can really do a thing, why do you have to fake it? Everything is, especially the more that you look into the ancient books, yes, like the book of Enoch, the book of Yasher, 
Even, even if you read the ancient pagan accounts, quote unquote, of the of the Upanishads or the Vedas from the Brahmin of India, reads like Star Wars. You read the um, Gilgamesh epic. Read about what the Sumerians thought about how I knew and Enlil and Enki got down. And the line begins to blur. The line begins to blur to where you, you know, you're like, wait a minute, what is futuristic? Is it really a thing? Or is all that we think of as futuristic actually ancient? So when you look at Jack Parsons and you understand the Babylon working, when you understand scripture, nothing is new under the sun. But when you look at what the devil's minions and ministers have already done, you have to really question, okay, so why, why does the devil need me to believe that he has to use certain means now to accomplish things that he's been doing for centuries? Does our belief help to power him or the machines or the fallen angels or the spirits, the ghost in the machine? How much does belief matter when it comes to sorcery and witchcraft? Voodoo. The devil needs for you to believe in his power. Remember, his, his whole game is about mocking God, twisting God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the devil in his mockery or in his sloppy copy attempt to be as the most high, he also requires your belief. That was a hard right hand. Somebody's staggering. He needs your belief. I don't believe in him. I know that he is the prince of lies. Jesus called those who were in power and coming against him. He said that they were vipers and he said that they were of their father. They were liars just like their father and all they could do is lie also. Why do you think that it's so common or it's such a common practice in science, in academia, period? I mean, you could be an English professor. You could be in the liberal arts. But what's common among academics is unbelief because you can't serve two masters you can't believe yourself to be God and then for the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob to be God you can't believe for Christ to be God so they've made their choice they want us to inadvertently make a similar choice and they want us to choose to stop believing in the promises of God and to start believing in the threats of the enemy. That's the left hand. They want us to stop believing the promises of God and to put more faith in the threats and empty boasts and promises of the enemy. That you too can be as God. 
if you take a bite of this knowledge, this technology, he needs for you to freely resign and give up believing in the supernatural most extreme promises of God so that you can believe in the supernatural most extreme threats of the devil this is what he needs and through technology, he wants you to think that you can achieve Godhood. Step further. But in the same direction, he wants you to believe that through technology, he can erase and destroy God's promises. Oh, oh, they use the sign and the sign, the sign is, and the sign is changing the words in the Bible. I can't read the Bible no more because not because the sign has changed all the words. Has it changed this part? Whose report will you believe? Has it changed this part for your weapons are mighty for pulling down strongholds? Has it changed this part? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Through technology, many of you, or through your choice of deciding to because you, you can't serve two masters. You choose to believe the devil's threats over God's promises when they come up against each other. You've already begun to be changed. You worried about you know some something being snuck into you to make you change. The five G in the air is just gonna overcome you and make you change. Some in the water, some in this, some in that. Pharmacy and pharmacon is sorcery, and there are many forms of sorcery besides the one that everybody's focused on right now, which is a form of sorcery. And I made it clear I don't endorse her, no sorcery. I made it clear I believed all of them was witches way before most of you. But I also understand that there are people who believe more in God and what God has promised them than the devil and what the devil has threatened them with. And they may not believe that in the way that I do. I drop off the mail to them just like I dropped off the mail to you. But from, from this seat, you have to be able to see all sides of an issue. All sides of a thing. Because God can do all things but fail. God can turn back. How many times does it say in, in the word that God repents or repented from something? That And again, you have to understand the meaning of the word. That doesn't mean he was like, oh, oh, Lord, forgive me. The true meaning of the word repent means to turn back from something. You're walking down a dark alley and it looks like it's it's 
not a wise idea to continue walking down that alley, you may repent and turn around and go back the other way. And again, Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 8 says, In all thy doings acknowledge the Lord thy God, and he shall direct your paths. Now, I acknowledge the Lord thy God in all of my doings, and I believe he directs my paths. But my path may not be your path, and I have to understand that. We're not all walking the same path to get to the same destination. So you have to understand that his ways are not your ways. <laughs> and so therefore, the way that he may decide to work something out in another person's life is not the way he will work it out in yours. Doesn't have to be the way that he would work it out in yours. But in all that you do and that you think and that you consider and concern yourself with, you want to be sure that you don't help the devil accomplish what the devil's trying to do. And the devil is trying to create a new you, a double you, a counterfeit version of you. Some of you are already helping him out. Not me, but the other. I ain't doing it. No, no, no. Some of y'all have changed so much since the Roni and the Sting have combined and caused many a mind to go blind. Some of you have actually already stepped into the change. The love of many waxing cold. When you are fearfully and wonderfully made. How does the devil create a double you? How does that happen? Does he have to go into your uh, DNA structure, if that's really a thing? Maybe we have some geneticists here tonight who can, who can confirm that there's no brotherhood involvement, no sorcery, no lying involved in the area of genetics. But the devil has proven he doesn't have to go in through that means. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. But the devil understands that there's more than one way to skin a cat. And he doesn't have to lay us all down on a table and do a surgical procedure to cause for us to change. So let's look at that. Let's look at some ways that we can see the devil creating a double you. Let's look and see. Prisoner of Hope, that's a good one right there. Media helps to create a double you. I remember when I was a teenager, I, I remember I was a sweet boy. I was a sweet little chubster up till I got about 13 years old. And I think that's when I began to have some kind of realization or thought that the world around me was a cold world and I needed to be colder if I was going to survive. And I made a conscious choice to be more cold and 
in truth, to be more devilish. I made a conscious choice at that time, past the age of accountability. And it was from that time on that the devil began to construct a new me. Different than the sweet boy that I once was. And although at first I would have sworn that I was still that same sweet boy. I can remember Grandma Jackson saying, mm, you're so hateful. And I can remember saying back to her, I'm not full of hate, Grandma. I'm full of love. But because of the things that I was allowing myself to partake in and to take in, I was beginning to change. It did not take a surgical procedure. Nor did I have to undergo any invasive medical experiment. all came from the mind which is the gateway that is the doorway into the soul the fastest way into the soul is through the mind mind control mk ultra project monarch project umbrella these projects kathy o'brien and bryce taylor and the rest will tell you these Projects don't require invasive procedures. And again, there are invasive procedures that can do these things. There are so-called medical procedures that mirror and copy ancient methods of witchcraft and sorcery. The idea of implanting a chip into someone and controlling them through the chip is their version of a technical advancement on an ancient witchcraft practice. Do you know what the ancient witchcraft practice was? I didn't either until I was praying for someone over the Skype praying deliverance, warfare prayers. And they began to bleed from the top of their head and it, it, it started to stream down their forehead. And at first we didn't, we didn't know what was happening. And of course, they were nervous. They started to bleed out of nowhere while we were praying. And the Lord began to speak and the person began to feel on top of their head where it seemed like the, the source of the blood and the cut that was starting to form was... They felt up there through their hair and they could tell that some, like, like there had been like an incision made and there was something up under there and as we prayed it it began to work its way out and finally it came all the way out and what it was was a small Flat, whitish, you know, you, you could tell it was white, though it was blood-stained stone that had been placed beneath their scalp.
it was a cursed stone that was used to keep them in a spell and to interfere with their cognitive abilities. The Lord told me it was the ancient equivalent of the modern day chip. True story. That experience took me to a lot of places in, in my thoughts. But what I remember that it brought me to understand and, and to better understand was that everything that they were able to do or every weapon that the devil is able to form technologically, there's already been an ancient version of it. Now let me say the obvious because I have to for some some people they're not let me say the obvious whether it be the technological futuristic form or whether it be the ancient primitive form both of them no bueno So you want to avoid any new technological advance that's supposed to or that's promised to do things that it cannot. Or, or any new technological advance that has not been properly tested. You avoid those things like the plague. Pun intended. You leave those things alone. But don't think that the fight is won there. It's not over. The party's not over. It's not over just because you refuse the technological way of being turned. The devil got more tricks for you. If that way won't work on you, he will attempt to work on you with the ancient ways. So I want to encourage you to stay away from the sting and the jab. And also to stay away from the mindset that causes you to lose your love for many. Stay away from the mindset that causes for you to lose Holy Spirit power. 1 Corinthians 13, love and the sound mind of Christ. Let's look at some things. To show and prove to you that, again, he's got more than one way. To turn you into a new you, a double you, if you will. Last night we looked at Future's Mask On, Mask Off, which was all about this double you agenda. In truth. And the turning you into something new. And the only thing that sets you free or makes you free, rather, is Christ. And again, I'm not in the position that everybody is in. But there's no thing that man does that can free you from bondage. There's no thing that man does that can heal you. All healing, all good things come from God. Even if the good thing was God gave you a Christian doctor or, or God gave you a very skillful doctor who cared about his craft and cared about his patients, that came from God. 
All deliverance comes from God. Praying and seeing that stone made manifest and then being given understanding as to what it was, that came from God. It didn't come from me. Every good thing comes from God. And every bad thing comes from the adversary. Does the devil love? Of course he doesn't. He does have things that people confuse as love. He does have certain go-to things that get mis misconstrued as love. But love, and again, that's our English word for it. You could, you could say a hava, you could say a more. That comes from God. It is a godly thing. This is why perfect love casts out all fear. And fear takes you out of the comfort of the comforter. And therefore, you cannot have a sound mind when in fear. So love is part of the cure for folks who are not in their sound mind. So the devil wants to starve people of love. Why the love of many waxes cold is because that's part of the devil's plan. And again, we're talking about real love. And that's what Mary was singing about. We're talking about real love. The for God so loved love the what greater love can a man have love that love the devil wants you to fall out of love with love and the devil wants you to have in place of love fear and suspicion The devil wants you to forfeit the power that love gives you. Love covers a multitude. Love has a lot of power. So one of the things that has to be sacrificed or one of the things that the devil understands, if he can make sure love is in short supply in this world, it will help him in his agenda of creating a new you, a double you. If you were raised with love, you know, a loving surrounding, you had someone pouring love into you. As is God's will for your life, the way you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you were healthy, you were relatively happy. It's when you started accepting the counterfeit versions of love and when the true version of love that you had as a little one, as a child, when that true version of love began to take a back seat to your new versions of love. Infatuation with some boy or some girl or some entertainer. A desire to be popular in school. A fear of being called weak or soft. These things interrupted the way you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Because the devil's goal was to strip you of love. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So that he could hollow you out. And fill you up with a new spirit. Now let's look at this double you in full effect. 
if we can. And and I'm, and I'm going to go back through some things again, tying this into the mask on the mask on mask off ritual in brotherhood rituals. A mask is used. They call it hoodwinking you. They will keep you blindfolded while they take you through the gauntlet of ritual. And when you take the mask off, you're a different individual. They go through the mock sacrifice of you as Hiram Abiff. Your first name ain't Hiram and your last name, Shonuf, ain't Abiff. But they take you through this ritual process. I maintain that they've taken us or that... A huge reason for the masking, for the nonsensical masking, was to, was to lead us through this gauntlet and cause for the old us to die so that when we took off the mask, there would be a new you. Interesting that this is done in conjunction with the shot that has affected many people, mind, body, and potentially soul. It's definitely affected people, My, <coughs> pardon me, mind, body, and soul. Because some people's souls have been damaged in the simplest way of, okay, well, I've got it. And so now that I've got it, I feel superior or I feel afraid that I don't need to be around mama or grandmama or sister, or brother or cousin. That's mind and soul damage. Not to mention physical damage. Damage to the body. Many people have died. So, after taking off the mask, <clears throat> folks are different that have gotten the sting. Some folks are different that have gotten the sting. Some folks are different that have not gotten the sting. Stop me when I'm lying. Some folks are different that have gotten the sting after they took off their mask. Just like the Masonic ritual, or just like Brotherhood rituals, where they lead you, they lead you around this pathway. At the end of it, they take down the mask, and you are new. And then some folks who have not gotten the sting, now that the mask has been taken off of them, they've become mockers and scoffers, or rather, now that. Officially, as a society, imagine a society personified. So this society person is being led through this gauntlet of different ritual exercises. And at the end of it, this society personified as a person gets to take off the mask. And there's a lot of people wilding out. That ain't never got stung. This is proof positive that the devil knows how to get it accomplished one way or the other. If you're not guarding both ways. Some people are so guarded of the sting way. That they missed. The doorway of the soul. They haven't been guarding the doorway of their mind and the love that the Lord put in them 
when they was little ones, has now waxed cold. And they're colder towards folks that they once loved. Score for the devil. Now, let's look at a couple of things. So, when we talk about the mask on, mask off, and we talked about the connection between Gemini, which I've done that too many times now, and how that represents the offspring of the Father God figure, astrologically expressed as Aries, and the Mother Goddess figure, astrologically expressed as Taurus. This is why the zodiac signs go. Number one, the first sign is Aries. That's the Father God. He's number one. Number two, the second sign is Taurus. That's the Mother Goddess representation in astrology. And number three is the child. The divine child, which is expressed as twins to represent its double mind state. Because this astrological expression of divine father, divine mother, and divine offspring is only symbolic, astrologically expressed as Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, but it's only symbolic of the devil represented as male. The devil represented as female and the devil represented as the child. When the devil is represented as the child, we're talking about the Antichrist because Christ was represented as the child. Born into Godhood. So this Gemini is to represent a child born into quote unquote Godhood. Remember the mockery, the, the reflection Mockery agenda. The devil's always attempting to do a sloppy copy of that which the Most High has already done. This is expressed a number of ways. In Hermetic Magic, it's expressed As this, when you hear them talk about as above, so below, it is a mockery. Again, what God has already said, they mock it. So it's a mockery of when God says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So their mockery is, as above, so below. What does that mean? Hell on earth. That's what it means. Because they're not talking about above in the heavens and so below. They're talking about above on the earth, so below in hell. The fallen angels no longer live in that abode. But the lie is, oh, well, they're on a higher realm. So as it is in the higher realm, so it is in the lower realm. Okay. You can have that. It's, ex it's expressing that as it is with the fallen angels, so shall it be with man. The fallen angels are condemned. They are servants of a defeated foe. And they want man to also be servants of that defeated foe. As above, so below. This is why they will do, you know, you'll see the Shriners commercials. And it makes me sad and mad. But see, I believe in God's grace and mercy. That's why, like, you know, I can't only see things one way because I, you know my ways are not like God's ways of course his ways are much higher so his perspective and his ability to see things in ways that we cannot I count on so when I see them little children those poor little sick kids 
or children rather, because kids are baby goats. That's why we call them that, because goats are used for sacrifice. Another spelling spell trick. But those poor, sickly children that are on those commercials, you know, and the and the uh, um, the Shriner mascot teddy bear. It makes me sad and it makes me mad. It makes me sad for the children. It makes me mad at them old, deceived minions of the devil. But you have to, you know, the devil has to have a covering of people that do good works, quote unquote. So, yes, you will see the brotherhoods and the sisterhoods out in certain communities sometimes, not not so much, but sometimes you'll see them out in certain communities doing philanthropic work. Yes, they give monies to schools and they give monies to universities and they give monies to hospitals. Sometimes they do little community drives. Like making sure everybody gets a stink and that sort of thing. So even a thing, you know, or or Drake shooting the video, uh, God's plan, where he goes around and gives people money. Do you know why God doesn't just give people money and the things that they want? Because he's a good father. A good father's not going to give your drunken butt keys to a car. A good physical father's not going to do that. So our Heavenly Father understands that certain things that we may want would destroy us if we had them. That certain woman that we think we want or that certain neighborhood we think we want to live in or that certain job title that we think we want. Anybody here wanted to be an entertainer when they was young? I've got my hand up. Sister Lorraine, you listening? We've talked about that. One time me and, matter of fact, the last time me and my brother D-Point had a real good conversation a few weeks ago. We laughed and laughed about how foolish we was and how the most high closed the doors because we had the talent we were we were in the top one percentile of the most talented and dope artists among our contemporaries I tell you Dilla was one of our contemporaries I met the man, shook his hand. I was introduced to him by DJ Dez at the hip hop shop. He had already heard my demo. He shook my hand and told me my demo was dope. This was when he wasn't the dealer that everyone worships today. So I just say that to say God won't give you just what you want just because you want it or even if you're skilled enough to do it. He's a good God, and he will make sure that nothing he gives you will be used in your destruction. So me, me and D had a rousing good time pretending that we were on drink champs. This is what happens when you get two people that's just too artistic and creative and silly that's known each other for 20 years together. And we did... Did did a mock interview as if we was on drink champs, and I was in you know I was imitating Noriega, and we was talking about all of the foul things that we did and all of the trouble we got into and being in cocaine rehab and everything because that's what we we both acknowledged that that's what have, that's what would have happened to us if the Most High had not have closed that door, a door that the devil was holding wide open. I told you we had inadvertent sacrifices. When I say inadvertent, I mean 
you know, people that that the devil would have liked for us to have seen as sacrifices for fame. Nothing that we did, no conjuring or no ritual or anything along that line, but, you know, the the little girl who sang the hook for our biggest song just happened to be crossing the street with her little brother and got hit and killed by a van going down Greenfield Road. And the third member, it was three of us that rhymed, he lost his mind and was sent to the mental hospital. And we lost contact. So things were happening that, again, me not being Christian, you know, neither of us having a foundation in Christ, it would have been bad. So I said all that to say, just because uh, we ask for something or, or just because a dream is fulfilled doesn't mean that it's God behind it. So when you see Drake and when you see the Shriners, when you see them doing something, quote unquote, good. From their hermetic point of view, as indicated in this drawing here, it is to balance out all of the bad that they've done in the dark. And that's how the devil operates, turns good to bad and bad to good and tries to make what is evil fair seeming. All the devil would have needed was for me to fix my mouth to say certain things after, you know, if God had not closed that door, after we went through the door, perhaps the devil would have had me make some proclamations that would have turned that young girl's death into our sacrifice or would have turned our brother's mental challenges into our sacrifice. I was headed in that direction. But again, it was not God's will. He closed the door because out of love, he won't give you something that you will destroy yourself with. So, one huge practice of all brotherhoods and sisterhoods is to take you through a ritual. The ritual invariably involves masking you and then or blindfolding you rather and you know which is a mask and then after you reach a certain point in the ritual taking off the blindfold or the mask. What they intend to do is to infuse a spirit within you through that ritual process where you're putting faith in this brotherhood group. When is the last time you put on a blindfold and let somebody lead you around? You got a brother or sister? Would you put on a blindfold and let your brother or your sister lead you around their house? Or a house that's new to you? Would you do that? You would hope you would never have to do that. Maybe if you had to do it, you would do it. But again, joining the brotherhood is not something you have to do. The devil wants your voluntary will. So would you voluntarily let your brother or your sister lead you around some unfamiliar house? So, what the devil does is by default, he will get faith out of you. That is an exercise in faith. And once you give faith to him, 
and you go through these rituals and you don't question what's going on and, 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 and you allow for yourself to be led around like a game goofy goober, by the time they grip you with the lion's paw and raise you up out of the proverbial grave, you are a new you. Or like T.I. saying with Justin Timberlake, the old me is dead and gone. Without ever stepping into a Masonic Lodge. The Brotherhood controlled powers that be. Walked us all through a mask on mask off ritual. With the hopes that once the mask was taken off. Of a personified society of once the mask was taken off of society personified. That society would be changed. And so would the individuals that make up the society. Have you been changed? I'm not talking about the way Sean Pace means. I'm talking about have you been changed into something darker, into something less loving, into something more fearful, into something with more of a mocker's spirit. Do you mock people because of this ritual that we've all been led in the dark through? We've all been led along a pathway that was unfamiliar to all of us. So it is good if you can say with all honesty, no, I have not. But some have indeed changed. They've changed the way they look at other people. Test your love. Has your love waxed cold? Do you still have a clean heart? Are you still operating in Holy Spirit power, which is the comfort of the comforter? The mind of Christ, which is the only sound mind. And 1 Corinthians love, which is defined first and foremost as being patient and being kind. If some of us are honest, we can say that our patience and our kindness has been tested during this time. Prayerfully, if we were steadfast, we can say, though we were tested, we passed the test in the end. But to be honest, we know we've all been tested during this time. It is good if you can say the devil failed in changing who I was before Doroni and the masking. And remember to to a Luciferian, to a true died in the wool Luciferian. Good and evil, and I mean this is all, this also applies to people that don't know they're Luciferians. Did you know it's a lot of people that don't know there's a lot of people that have Luciferian ideals don't know they're Luciferian. A lot of people who would call themselves agnostic, people who would call themselves Gnostic, people who would call themselves, some people that would call themselves simply pagan, some people that would call themselves Pan African. Some people that would just say I'm woke and other people that would say I'm conscious don't realize that they're in alignment with Luciferian ideals because they don't really know what they are. The Luciferian ideal is that there is no good or evil. It's only positive and negative. Negative. 
there is no good or evil because what you might think is evil, I might think is good. And what what you might think is evil, right. And what you might think is good, I might think is evil. Bull, poppycock. Evil is as evil does. Evil is the misuse of a child. That's evil. What Crowley did with young boys, that's evil. Evil is the perversion of things that God designed to be a particular way. That's evil. Lots of things are evil. Some things that appear to look good are actually evil. You may think that Megan Thee Stallion looks good, but I'm telling you, he's evil. <laughs> Bad choice. I retract that statement. I don't know that person's heart. I don't know how that young man really is, you know, behind closed doors. But <clears throat> I digress. I think you get my point. Everything that looks good ain't good. And some things that look good are really evil. Let, let's put it there. Um, perhaps you've seen the TV show Lucifer, which used to be on Fox, which is another way of saying 666. There's lots of ways of saying 666, www.com. The www is 666. Okay. But, you know, uh, the, the, the guy that plays Lucifer, you know, I'm sure that one of the requirements for that role was that you be considered to women to be a handsome man. The devil knows how to dress himself up in things that look good. Evil, the opposite of evil, isn't good or nice. The opposite of evil is holy. Some things that might be holy might feel bad to you. Especially when you're young, you can say that, you know, the practice of abstinence is holy, but it might not feel good to you at first. Some of y'all might say at last. Okay, but you get my point. So there's a differentiation between good and bad. Good and bad, we can say are relative. A lot of times when the Bible says good, What's really being conveyed is holy. Like in this scripture, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. I could say, woe unto them that call evil righteous and righteous evil. Because again, you can say lasagna tastes good with olives in it. I can't say lasagna tastes evil if it's got olives in it. I can say it does not taste good to me or it tastes bad with olives in it. I could say that. I could say, you know, EDM, electronic dance music, it all sounds bad to me. I could say that and not be wrong. Wicked is different and not relative. Do you understand? Wicked is is not relative. Bad is relative. You can say um, strawberries taste bad to me. I don't like the consistency. I don't like the taste. It's too acidic tasting to me. Ugh, they just taste bad. It's not saying that they're wicked or evil. Overstand that that that's the difference, but that's that's the tall weeds that they try to take people through. Um, and again, 
these concepts of, of wickedness and holiness, these are inherent things. Everything that man learns was written down by another man. But what men don't like to admit is that that man was inspired by some spirit. We deal with a book that man's hands had to write, but it was inspired by the only spirit that is right. Righteousness. The only righteous spirit. And whatever it is that a man believes, whatever is his discipline, he learned that from some other man who was inspired by a spirit, not necessarily a righteous one, especially if you come in here, uh, try to lip box with me. You'll lose because I've got the mic. Snap, I've got the power. And I can cut you off. Uh, but anyway, we're going to let everybody stop our good time. Ain't that right, Sister Minister Danielle, who's in the house? And and we are going to get to our prayer request because that's the best. That's that's the thing that's most important that we do here. But let's look at a couple of more things with the W process. Um, let's see what we've got here that's good. This thing ain't tripping, is it? Some things disappearing. Let's see. Back to Movie Maker. Okay, the pictures don't want to change. That's interesting. Okay, I know what to do for you. Okay, let me just fix that right quick. Okay. Um, a lot of folks are familiar with the examples that I'm gonna that I'm gonna use here for the W concept to be brought home into full fruition. I'm going to um, revisit something that I know that again, folks here, you're probably familiar with it. My attempt is going to be to um, show another side of something I guess that, that you may be familiar with already and it's to illustrate I think in the most um, okay all right it's to illustrate I think in the most um, direct way what the W process is all about. Um, maybe you've seen past live streams where we've talked a little bit about the movie Metropolis. 1927's Metropolis, I believe it was. Uh, this movie is a very important movie to the Brotherhood because, because, pardon me, in that, in the movie Metropolis, this idea that we've been talking about, this very abstract idea, was put into film version. This very abstract concept of creating a W, which is, by the way, um, a very important concept in Hollywood and in, 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 in entertainment. It's such an important concept in Hollywood and in entertainment that, as we've talked about in times past, but I know it's a lot of a lot of new folks here. Uh, it's such a big deal in Hollywood and entertainment that you have a plethora of entertainers and musical groups that embody this idea of W or twinning, sometimes in the name of the group many times in the names of songs that are done by said group. Some famous ones that, that stick out in mind is Duran Duran. Well, is it so nice you have to say it twice? 
Lisa Lisa and Cold Jam, um, Tony Tony Tony, Tom Tom Club. Uh, again, the purpose for this practice is to embody this idea of creating another you. So there's there's you know even in yin yang twins you know and again I'm not saying that the artist is always aware of this oftentimes the artist is named by someone who is well versed in the witchcraft and the artist is just a goofy goober they don't know what's going on but someone who's well versed in the witchcraft may offer them this double name you know you know going from calling yourself Tupac <laughs> spelling it out T U P A C to being Tupac who was certainly a picture of entertainment business duality but he's not the only one um i know you've heard about Beyonce's alter ego um Sasha Fierce i know that you've heard about Nicki Minaj's alter ego, Roman. Okay. That's all right. I can do it like a podcast. Yeah, now the, now the blackboard is acting up. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll leave it off. Um, you can look at this and, and tell me, is this a coincidence or is this something that Wizards had to orchestrate? And I've said this many, many years ago, many, many moons ago. Tupac Hoax Channel will uh, 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 back me up on that, I'm sure. And shout out to Tupac Hoax Channel. They've always been very gracious. But um, I'm, you know, by, by the will of God, I'm the first truther to come on and say negative words about the god of many people the god of thugs and rapping rapping thugs tupac and i didn't just come on and say this you know just whatever i came on and i broke down how he was project janice personified then i doubled down on it shortly after that, I think in a different video, and I talked about how he and Biggie were both Project Janice personified. Listen, and you can feel this yourself. Coincidentally, they both were born Gemini, or rather, they both embodied the spirit of the astrological sign Gemini, which again is not just a sign. People say a sign. What is a sign? A symbol? Are you a symbol? Who are you, Prince? No, it's a spirit. Stop saying it's my sign. It's not your sign. It's not your spirit. You belong to it, in truth. But they both would have been considered Gemini. Gemini, I already explained what Gemini is. Gemini is Hermes, is Mercury, is the double-minded man is Janus, the two-headed deity. Both of them, again, coming under this spirit, this gen. The twenty twin twin. One of them is fat, the other is skinny. One represents the West, or, you know, again, both of them supposedly born on the East Coast, but one very boldly representing the East and the other one very boldly representing the West. One of them considered by many to be pretty or attractive. The other one considered by many and even by himself to be black and ugly as ever. What a coincidence. Both of them killed in the same manner in a vehicle. One of them in an SUV. The other one in a 
sedan. What a coincidence. So they were both. And no, it's not a kill the MC. But anyway, please let 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 me bring something to bear that everybody can benefit from. Both both were expressions of this idea of the double U. Because people mocked and and mimicked and wanted to be like both of them. I never saw so many fat brothers in Coogee sweaters in Detroit in my life. And I never saw so many little skinny guys getting tats all over them and running around trying to be tough in my life. Until these characters who spread those spirits about. They not only made, they, they were not only compromised as doubles because Biggie was a little sweet chubster boy raised by his Jamaican mama who said that they never missed a Christmas. He says, Christmas missed us. And then Pac was a little effeminate Skinny little nice sweet art artsy boy, which was evident by that interview he did when he was like fourteen years old. But he played an alter ego. Some folks said that after he played the role of bishop in Juice, and a bishop is what a religious figure. He just about created a cult. There's a cult of Pac. So the W process been in effect. It's a big deal in the entertainment business. But now what the adversary has tried to do is cause for me and you to engage in that ritual through the mask on mask off process that and, and this long ritual process that began around the Ides of March in 2020. So we have all been subjected to this twinning, to this double U programming. We want to do double and triple checks to make sure that we are still who we were before. To make sure that, you know, regardless of all of the confusion, the spirit of confusion, that's reigning right now, which is a big part of the Gemini thing, the confusion, the spirit of confusion um, being caused by, is it left? Is it right? Is it up? Is it down? Do I wear one mask? Do I wear two masks? Do I wear no masks? If you get stung, are you immune? Or if you get stung, can you still get it? Do you really build up immunity? Does it live on surfaces? Does it not live on surfaces? Can it? Can an animal get the roni or can an animal not get the roni? It's, it's pimp game 101 to scramble the mind of the victim, the proverbial whore in this case, and keep them guessing so that they don't have a grasp on what reality really is. It's like it is trauma-based mind control. So I, you know, control or delete. I said um, I told the audience last night that we were going to come on for a little while tonight and not be on very long. And maybe this is the Lord's way of making me keep that promise because I was really on a roll. Got a lot of pictures and things to show. Maybe next time we'll go into the pictures and whatnot. But I do want to make sure that we get the prayer request portion of the program uh, 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 going and done and finished. 
uh, because we have a lot of prayer requests. So if you want to hear more, if your desire is to um, pick up where we left off, then we'll we will do that because I said I have <laughs> I haven't even touched the surface of, of my pictures, but we are having some some technical difficulty that's keeping me from switching. And it's I mean I hate to sound like no limit. Especially when some of y'all think I'm so limited. I'm not limited. It ain't my fault. I've got a nice Alesis Multimix 4 USB digital mixer. Um, my my trusty Hewlett Packard laptop, which has always um, served me well and um, is a blessing to have. Um, and I'm on... Infinity wireless network, so I'm not using a hotspot. But again, you know, you know, talking about the spirits, you know, one, one thing, one thing that many of you will learn who might be new to acceptance that the spirit realm is is real, is that as long as you don't pay the spirit realm any attention, it won't pay you much attention. But once you show an awareness of that spirit realm, and even beyond that, once you start trying to tell hundreds of people <laughs> about the devil and his spirit realm, things happen. And I mean, it's just, it's part of the course, goes with the territory. So, it don't bother me. I hope it don't bother you. But sometimes it means that we have to just switch gears and be malleable and able to adjust. So we're going to have to adjust our thrust. And I'm going to go to the prayer request now. And by now you should have already put your prayer request in. It's expedient for me to read the prayer request that we already have. If you have prayer requests that you would like to send in for next time, please do feel free to do so. I will give you that information um, at the end of this portion of the broadcast. And the next time that we uh, meet, I, I will also have it set up to do some call-ins. Um, I would like for those who want to give me a fearful, tearful, earful to be able to do so. I may even call the show that. Want to give me a fearful earful? Call such and such a number. Um, and what I will probably do as opposed to putting up a number is what we did last time, and that's have folks who want to be on the call-in show to send me an email that I will announce at that time. Okay? And then... I will give you a call so you can be looking forward to that for our next show. And again, I'm going to have to switch gears now and go into the prayer request portion of the program. Okay. And, <clears throat> and yes, Brother Vaughn is absolutely right. The spirit realm will attack you. Even in your ignorance. Yes, it will. Um, but it is most concerned about people that are aware. The devil does his business best in the dark. So he likes to be able to operate in the dark. And without the light being shed on him. And what we do here is what he doesn't like that is to shed the light on him and make an open show of the works of the enemy which is what drew me to christ 
Some people are nice, sweet folks who have loved the Lord since they were children. Some people have wanted to know the Lord since they were children, like me. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to know, I wanted to know about God and the devil since I was a little guy. But and, and then there are others who have the type of personality where the goodness of the Lord, they tasted and saw that the Lord was good and that drew them in. For me, in my hard head itself, especially as a younger man, it everything had to make logical sense. I had to be able to research it. Look it up. What do the academics say? Well, the academics say they can't find Jesus' house. The academics say that there was no J. The academics say, well, which, which, would, which would lead me to believe that there was no J sound. <laughs> Just because there was no J doesn't mean there wasn't a J sound. But the academics say that you can't prove that God exists. The academics say, and the great philosophers say, that if God did not exist, man would create him. In all of that. So what God had to do for me is let a, let a demon off the leash or give a demon a little extra chain and let that thing step into my world and show me that everything is not so measurable. Everything is not so researchable and that the most important truths in life don't necessarily have proof in life. The wind is the wind, but you can't weigh it. They can tell you how fast it's going, or they can get close. It's still there. It's everywhere. And the spirit realm is as the wind in that respect. So, let us touch and agree. In the name of Jesus and the power of his name. And we ask, Lord, that you would please forgive us for our sins and hear these prayers on behalf of our loved ones and on behalf of those who have written in and asked for prayer. In the name of Jesus, Lord, out of your grace and out of your mercy. We give you your word, Lord. You said wherever two or more are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst. I would like folks to touch and agree with me for emergency prayer for our brother Barrington, who as of, uh, well, during the last live stream, last night's live stream, he was actually, he was rushed to emergency. He's having pain uh, or he was having pain and it was enough for him to take off work, which is not his character and way. And so his wife doing what she thought was the dutiful and wise thing to do encouraged him um, to go with her and get it checked out. He did. The doctors said that he was bleeding from his brain. And as true to the title of practice they've been practicing on this brother a good brother from Jamaica and you know trying this and trying that and nothing that they've tried has alleviated this issue the issue has now gone on for several days so we just want to touch and agree. We just want to ask in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Father, that they will indeed do no harm, as is the beginning of their oath to their pagan god Hermes. Lord, we just ask that it would be true as Barrington serves and worships and loves only you, Heavenly Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we ask, Lord, that you would please set the crooked thing straight concerning low sodium and low potassium, concerning the doctors suggesting that his blood pressure medication be stopped. 
Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that these things would not cause him any further problems in Jesus' name. And that you would reach down your right hand of righteousness and heal him. Bind your supernatural, miraculous, and instantaneous healing to Brother Barrington from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, that you would stop any hemorrhaging of his brain. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would return him to comfort and loose him from this symptom of pain. Loose him from the nausea. Loose him from the lack of appetite. And I had a chance to actually sit down and sup with Brother Barrington and his wife, and I can tell you, something's wrong with his appetite. Something's wrong. Because we have that in common, him, he and I. So, for our friend and brother Barrington, Lord, we just ask that you would set the crooked things straight, Lord God, and show up and show out like only you can do and heal him in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. We touch and agree. Amen. And I just wanted to make sure I said all of that right because he he did actually return uh, from emergency earlier today. So 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 he's back home and resting, but still having some of the same or he was before we prayed for him, still having some of the same uh, symptoms, the nausea and the pain. Now, uh, I want to pray for our brother Wren from the New York City family. We've prayed for him concerning his business, that the Lord would bless the works of his hands and continue to give him witty ideas and inventions for his business, which um, he says his project has changed, but is moving forward in a great way, hopefully, and God willing. His project will help to change the way we identify pets, not just here, but the world over. So he says, please keep me in prayer. He said, we're not quite there yet, but this is the year for its release. And we are we are expecting success for our brother Ren and his family. And we, we also had prayed for his baby boy, um, Little nephew Noah. Um, I know some of you may rem may remember when we prayed for him as a new father, and so for our brother Ren and for his family, for his wife and for his son, he asked for prayer to keep him grounded, to help him to stay grounded and focused on the mission that is at hand on bringing to full fruition that which God inspired him to do. In Jesus' name, let us touch and agree with that. And ask that he continue to stay on the Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 8 path. In all of his doings, let him acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct his path in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. And yes, folks, folks are curious about your invention, Brother Wren. We can't wait until you're ready to roll it out. He is, he is a believer, and um, he's been diligent in putting his business together. And when you're ready to roll it out, we're going to do all we can to support you, dear brother. And we love you. Brother Wren is a very faithful supporter of this ministry and I can count on him like a calculator. We want to also pray in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. For our sister Nisa, who has a prayer request. She's asking in Jesus name. Well, first she's greeting the congregation and saying grace, peace, love and blessings to everyone in the body of Christ. 
always a pleasure to read her prayer requests. She knows how to address folks. And is just a good writer. An organizer. And she, she's she been doing a great job organizing and keeping up with the fellowships and the... Um, uh, um, and keeping folks informed on uh, how to join both the fellowships and the morning prayer with Sister Minister T. Rieger. And so I want to, again, encourage people to, um, if you're interested in the fellowships or the morning prayer, to just please get in touch with me, Brother Minister Theo, and I will plug you in. If you did that from last night's show already, I've, I've got you on the list, and I'm going to shoot her that information um, after this, okay? So I thank folks who already did that from last night. But if you're just now hearing this and you'd like to be a part of, of those fellowships and Bible studies and more and or morning prayer, just let me know what it is that you'd be interested in or I'll just shoot, shoot you to Sister Nisa and she'll send you all the information that you would need. So she says she's praying for more discernment in all things and to put in practice what she's been learning. She's praying to be never doubtful and always sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading. And she's praying to continue to be a blessing so that she can bless others in whatever way the Lord desires. In Jesus' name she prays. Amen. We want to touch and agree in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And and I want to give a special shout out of encouragement to the to the uh, fellowship crew, the prayer warriors, the brother ministers and sister ministers involved in that. Uh, of course, Sister Minister T and Sister Nisa, but we cannot forget the key players as well, the brother ministers and the sister ministers. Our sister, the latter rain, who is a joy and a very special and blessed woman of God. And our brother, Jason, follower of Christ. Our brother, Reuben, who um, is there from time to time, as well as brother Kobe. And who else? Oh, oh, and we cannot forget brother Don, brother Don a very anointed man of God who I know has a minister's heart. You know, I, I know I know that they all do, but I just can't forget Brother Don. Um he he brings so much to that group and to this ministry. I'm thankful to God for him. So Again, if you're interested in joining in with these fine folks for the fellowship meetings, which, you know, have a number of folks um, involved. Sister Melissa, God bless her. Uh, Sister Shauna, God bless her. Um, I know Lady Soul has been there before. Um, if you want to be a part of that, again, these are things that we're doing to ensure that once they take me down and take me out of here, uh, folks can still keep on going with what it is that God has established. That's that's my prayer. So contact me if you're interested in those things. I'll give you the information. Well, the information is actually in the description box. How about that? If you don't know what a description box is, I'll tell you when I'm done praying. Sister Nicole Halstock has a prayer request. She says, please pray that I can be released from peripheral neuropathy and fibromyalgia, both very painful muscle cramps and spasms and joint pain. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. She says, thank you. And I pray that all are physically, mentally and spiritually healthy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our prayer, for hearing her prayer request and petition in Jesus' name, Lord. Please loose her. Why do I say loose? She said released. The Lord understands all languages. 
He has a great thesaurus and dictionary. He knows every synonym and antonym. He understands released is loosed. I'm the one with the problem because I like to do things sometimes by a process uh, that helps me remember things, uh, which is why sometimes things will rhyme. But it's also um, why I, I try to use the words that come from the word. Because I was taught by my elders who instructed me in prayer that if you give God his word back, it can make for a more effective prayer. And as the goofy goober that I am, I took that so literally that I like to use God's words exactly as they are in our King James Version as I speak English. And all of you do too, even if you like to pretend you know about four or five words of Hebrew. Uh, so I use the words that are found in the scripture. I know, I used to do it too. So we just want to pray and ask that our sister Nicole would be loosed from peripheral neuropathy and fibromyalgia and that the Lord would bind up any fibroids or any symptoms, no, any root causes in Jesus' name, any evidence, Lord God of glory, of fibromyalgia in Jesus' name. And that the Lord would heal her nerves and bind the comfort of the comforter and the balm in Gilead and your divine, supernatural, miraculous, instantaneous healing power to her entire nervous system in Jesus' name. Peripheral is on both sides. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God of glory, that you would reach down with your right hand of righteousness and touch her nervous system and set the crooked things straight and loose her, Heavenly Father, Lord, completely from peripheral neuropathy. In Jesus' name, bind up every spirit associated with these conditions that she has named. Keep those things bound in everlasting and breakable chains and cast them out and cast them down in the power and authority of Jesus, mighty matchless, holy name. We touch and agree and call it done. Amen and amen. Yes, indeed. And I touch and agree with all the prayers in the chat to that effect in Jesus name. We touch and agree and we praise you, Heavenly Father, because we know that you have yet done as we have asked in Jesus name for we have not asked a miss. For Justice and Leela. Sounds like a movie. It says, hi there, Brother Theo. I was hoping to make a request for prayer. Well, well, you, well you've come to the right place. It said, I've been confused, angry, and just plain numb. As the word says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In my heart, I desire to know and do for the Lord, for myself. I've been debating what I should do. See a therapist. I can't talk to anyone at church and I have inner healing that's, that needs to be done. Praying sometimes seems like the hardest thing in the world and remembering is difficult. I remember, I remember being there. I need to grow, let go of childish things. I want that. There's a lot I didn't say. But please, just pray for direction, counsel, and healing of my heart, please. I don't, I don't want whatever left of life to, I don't want whatever's left of life to pass me by. I don't want it to be a waste. Well, now you sound uh, more wise than I was at the same time. I remember when praying seemed very difficult to me. I remember when I could not pray. I remember seeing people pray. I remember trying to pray. I've been trying to pray ever since I was little. You know, I would just talk to God. I would say my prayers at night. But I can remember what I felt like when I had come of age and I felt like I saw people pray in a way that I, that I knew I could not yet pray. They were praying with great faith. 
They were praying fervently and effectually. And I wanted that. And I remember when I could not remember Psalm 23. Have mercy. I couldn't remember nothing about no scripture. I never remembered my rhymes. So memorization was not my thing. I could come up with something. But uh, remembering what I had already come up with verbatim was just not a skill I had. And I'm going to tell you that the Holy Spirit will meet you where you are and take you to where he wants you to be. So we just want to touch and agree with you that the Lord will indeed help you to put away childish things so that you can step into the adulthood and the maturity in Christ that the Lord wants you to be in. And I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would please give them the strength to put aside things that are not edifying in the name of Jesus and to leave behind false comforts in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Lots of false comfort is found when you're young and looking around. And, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, in Jesus name Father, that you would please, Lord, cause for them to look straight ahead at you in the name of Jesus and not be distracted and made to turn to the right or to the left off of the pathways that you have set aside for them. Lord, let them acknowledge you in all of their doings so that you can indeed direct their paths. As it is written, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. Lord, let them seek you and seek your face in Jesus' name so that you can add unto them the things that you have planned for them according to your Jeremiah 29 and 11 perfect will for their lives in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. We ask, Lord, that you would please, Lord God of glory, give them the desires of their heart as they delight themselves in you. And by giving them the desire of their heart, it does not mean to provide for them everything that their little heart desires, but that you would actually place in their hearts. Have mercy. Desire for things, Lord, that are in alignment with your Jeremiah 29 and 11 will for their lives in Jesus' name, which is that they live and not die and that they prosper, even that their soul may prosper and that they be in good health according to the plans that you have for them, Lord. And Heavenly Father, Lord, please loose them from anything or any person, any thinking, any stinking thinking, any imaginations and thoughts that need to be cast down and brought into captivity to the will of Christ, Lord, and any negative influences in Jesus name Lord or habits and Lord loose them from those things bind those things up and cast them out and away from them in the name of Jesus and the power of his name we touch and agree and I touch and agree with all who are listening thank you father hallelujah and brother minister Ned had posted this for a brother in the chat named Steve who said he's who had said he's been feeling heaviness and hard to pray but feels lucky to pray so we just want to ask in in the name of Jesus and the power of his name lord that you would just guide your servant Steve in Jesus name lord guide him to want to give you the sacrifice of praise the sacrifice of praise why is it called a sacrifice of praise Theo, because you don't want to give it up. It counts the most when you don't feel like doing it. Yes. Everybody's happy when things are going their way and you feel like praising God then, don't you? Like Big Ted used to say, everything's funny when your pocket's full of money and nothing is a joke when your pockets are broke. So don't be like that. Don't be a fair weather friend, Brother Steve. And in the middle, in the midst of your heaviness, if you put on the garment of praise, it will lift off the spirit of heaviness, according to Isaiah chapter 61, that is. And you can count on that like a calculator. So we just ask, Lord, that you would please, Lord, help our Brother Steve to put on that garment of praise and to keep it on. To put it on and keep it on like the full armor of God. Let it fit him to a T in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. And please keep his lamp filled with the oil of joy and gladness and the joy of the Lord and loose him from all sadness and madness, heaviness and so-called depression. Heaviness is the, is the um, King James way, the King James Version's way of saying depression. 
So loose him from this heaviness, Lord, that presses down on him. Depression. It, you know, if you weigh like I weigh, when you sit on the mattress, once you get up, there is a depression on the mattress. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just ask, Lord God of glory, that you would keep him with a merry heart. That's also one reason why I have a merry heart. I keep a merry heart. Somebody asked me, does God want you to have a good time? My God, my God, my God, my God likes to joke on me and to joke with me. He likes to let me see the humor in things. Certainly. All good things come from God. A merry heart does the body good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Amen. So, Lord, we pray for our brother Steve to also have a merry heart. And for our sister Carla, this is her prayer request from yesterday. She says, evening, brother Theo, blessings and love. Blessings and love to you, dear sister. She says, asking for prayer for my oldest daughter. I trust God's doing when he says he'll do. Amen. That's wisdom off the rip. Uh-oh, here we go. Are you ready? I know a lot of people run when it's time to do prayer requests, and that's fine. In time, in time, many of them will stay. That's fine. But for those of you who like to stay for the prayer requests, and not just because you like to ear hustle and listen about other people's business, okay? But for those of you who actually do like to listen and pray, you remember we've had several of these, okay? Always around the same age, similar situation. Y'all will remember praying for this for other people. Check it out. She says, my daughter is saying she likes women or bisexual, and she's only 13. Is Sister Carla still in the chat? There may be a sister or two here that may be able to give you a word of knowledge. Perhaps they've had some experience with that. As well as collecting crystals and recently denouncing Christ. That's that age. That's that age. That's that age when... That's that age when my cousin Bobby told me. Well, no, actually, his mama, my mama's sister, Auntie Joyce. Auntie Joyce told me, I remember now. No, she told me. Bobby didn't tell me. She told me. She said, Ted, do you know why your mama sent you to go be with Niecy Clark? I was 13 that summer. She didn't let me go to the Jacksons like I normally do. She sent me to be with Niecy Clark, who... I hadn't had much experience with Nisi, you know. I remember playing with Larry and them. Um, but Auntie Joyce said, because, Ted, she thought something was wrong with you, like the devil was in you. That's what my auntie told me. Thirteen, something about that age. And, yes, Nisi showed me so much love, and I had so much fun playing with all those sons of hers that I came back home a little bit better. They made my first demo with Larry. But anyway. This is that age. This is that age. That age of rebellion. That's why 13 is called the number rebellion. Well that's one of the reasons why. But anyway. Lord. She says. But I am knowing through the power of the righteous. His will. For her will. Prevail. His will, the Lord God's will for her will prevail. She says, I'm also celebrating my son Nathan's 13 years of life today. Have mercy. Hallelujah. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. May the Lord bless both your son and your daughter. She says, I have a praise update. I will have all my children back home by July in Jesus name. She said, God is moving me into a new season of blessings that are overflowing. She says, I'm asking for prayer that all the transitions be smooth that he has for me. Amen. She says, I bought a vehicle today. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. She says, but the check engine light came on after driving on the highway. That can happen for a number of relatively easily fixable reasons. It can. 
It can happen. And we pray that it it it, it will uh, be something that the Lord can easily correct or can send you in the right direction to have corrected expeditiously. God has given me enough funds to try and fix it. I truly believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say that because God will do what he says he'll do. As long as I stand by his word, he will come through. You can say that again. Because it's true. She says, I truly believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper because God will do what he says he'll do. As long as I stand by his word, he will come through no matter what it looks like. I trust God in everything. So I love you, Brother Theo, and the body of Christ. Thank you for interceding for me. And we give you nothing but love and peace and grace and mercy from Jesus to Christ back at you and ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name that he would please loose your daughter from the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of confusion, sexual confusion, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, crystalmancy, the spirit of the Antichrist. Every spirit of obstinance in Jesus' name, yes, Lord. Every spirit of stubbornness in Jesus' name, yes, Lord. Lucifer, Heavenly Father, Lord God, away from the spirit of Lesbos in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Lucifer, Heavenly Father, from the spirit of the James 1 and 8 mind in the name of Jesus. Lucifer, from every spirit of death, hell, and the grave in the name of Jesus, for as it is written, honor your father and your mother and your days shall be long. Lucifer, Heavenly Father, Lord God, away from every spirit, Lord God of glory from influence in Jesus name from music in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus and Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would lead our sister Carla to the right diagnostical um, mechanic in Jesus name. Lord, lead her, Heavenly Father, Lord, to a God filled, righteous minded. service person in Jesus name Lord who will um, help to ensure that that check engine light is not a problem any further or any longer in the name of Jesus and Lord please bless and order Nathan's steps in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Lord order his steps in the name of Jesus to be on the pathway of, of righteousness for your name's sake, in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, Lord, put his sister back on the pathways of righteousness for your name's sake, in the name of Jesus. Lord, loose her. Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory from false doctrine and false teaching, in Jesus' name, Lord, wherever this influence is coming to her from, in the name of Jesus, Lord, show and prove that that source of information is a lie. And confused and the truth is not in it in the name of Jesus Lord let that little girl be able to see the signs that she's been lied to in the name of Jesus and the power of his name Lord Jesus if it be your will Heavenly Father lead her to the right information on on YouTube or through her mother's urging in Jesus name something that will change her mind and help to transform her to renew her mind in Christ in Jesus name and to bind to her oneness with the mind of Christ once again in Jesus name we touch and agree amen and for our sister Villar she says my mom and five-year-old niece are getting on a plane from Florida to New York last night it says tonight but this was from last night she says the flight keeps getting delayed. There's rain in the forecast when the, when they depart tonight and rain when they return. Please pray for a safe flight both ways. We do touch and agree for traveling mercies and for the angels that the Lord has assigned for them to be with them to and from their journey in Jesus name. A safe landing coming and going. She says, I've never been anxious about a plane flight before, but lately I've been in anxiety because anxiety is nothing but a form of fear. Understandably, fear is in the air now when there is confusion and when people don't um, know what's going on. Fear of the unknown will grow. 
She says, please pray for me to trust God and live by his peace and to have faith in him. Thank you. We touch and agree. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that you would loosen and bind to her the perfect peace that surpasseth all understanding and the perfect peace of one whose mind is stayed on the Lord. And Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that when that plane is taking off and when that plane is landing, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the angels that you have assigned to accompany her loved ones, Lord, help to guide that plane safely to and from its destinations without any negative incidents, mistakes, accidents or mishaps in the name of jesus we touch an agreement and we do indeed call it done amen and amen okay brother ned has a book and that's great because i encourage people to send me as much as they want or as little as they want so I'm going to read, I'm going to go through it in the name of Jesus and let the prayer warriors receive Holy Spirit guidance as to what to pray in the chat in Jesus name. God bless you, Brother Ned. <clears throat> he said, um, today I stopped by my brother's store. He typically isn't there. But today he walks in 10 minutes after I get there. He says, I recently reached out to him, giving him encouragement, telling him the Lord is putting you through this to build you up. I've spoken with him about the Lord for the past two years. And today he broke down in the store crying after telling me a short testimony. He says, now, mind you, this guy's like 6'3 and a bodybuilder. <laughs> well, but, you know, the spirit man, the spirit man feels the weight of heaviness the same. Despite our frame. He says, and I went over to him and hugged him, telling him the Lord is with you as he's crying. Then we prayed together and spoke about what's going on. We, he says, I ended up there for two hours. Hallelujah. He said, we spoke about starting a podcast called NASA's Brat. Got that from you, LOL. He owns a nutrition store. But he asks, as he pulled out four mics, he's like, you know how to use these. I don't, LOL. Point is, the Lord sent me there to be the third person to tell him to leave his toxic relationship that hasn't been good for years. His ex-chick and him both do steroids. And he says he's done living, he's done with living without putting God's first. Amen. He says he's done living without putting God first. So he wants to live putting God first from now on. Just would like the family tonight to touch and agree on the Lord to please continue to use him and convict his heart. He's been struggling with many issues over the years and his ex didn't help. But that's beside the point. I humble as the Lord I humble I humbly ask that the Lord break any soul ties with Jacob and Jordan and we prayed this together. So I do have his permission, asking the Lord to purify his heart and renew his mind, that he may draw closer to the Lord, putting him first in all things that in, in all things that he does. Seek ye first the kingdom and all things will be added unto you, asking that the Lord loose any spirits in Jesus name, spirits of frustration and irritation, divination, anger, and anything that falls under those spirits and to bind those spirits up and cast them out and down into the pit of the abyss where, or wherever Lord Jesus Christ says they belong in Jesus' name. He says, I asked that the Lord, okay, he says, I ask that the Lord, um, I asked the Lord for a hedge of protection around his body, both his body made of both his dwelling made of flesh and bone and his dwelling made of brick and stone and of a Holy Spirit firewall 
protection to cover and protect him from every direction in Jesus name and make it impenetrable in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, Lord, and cover it in the blood of Jesus and seal it airtight in the name of Jesus. He says, and I ask this humbly, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of glory, that this be your will, Lord, so that we not be asking amiss in the name of Jesus and that we all touch and agree and declare and decree that the Lord will raise up a standard against the enemy that's coming in like a flood against him in Jesus name and that we ask that the angels assigned to his life since birth be loosed and then bound to him in the name of Jesus with the form of God from in Ephesians and with the whole arm of God in Jesus name Lord God of glory and with the form of God from Ephesians chapter 11. And to give him peace of mind, for our God is not the author of confusion, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And Lord, please loosen and bind to him, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Give him comfort of mind and comfort in his new place, where he will be alone in the physical, but not truly alone, because the Lord Jesus is with him. As the word says, if I make my bed in hell, he is there. If I make my bed in heaven, he is there. I humbly ask that the Lord seal this prayer by Isaiah 55 and 11, Matthew 18 and 18, Psalm 91, and all the promises within there. In the name of Jesus, and we touch and agree, and we call it done in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen and amen. We touch and agree. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And for those who had asked me to keep them updated on folks to pray for, I would just ask you to, you know, if if it's within your power and you're still willing to just kind of jot down some of the names of folks as we go through them here. And also, I would like to challenge prayer warriors to pray for folks that you know. And folks that you don't know who have who have received the sting. Pray for those folks who have not reported any negative effects to not have any. Pray for folks who have to be loosed from those effects in Jesus name. Pray that the Lord would remake every medication and vaccination that any of his children are taking according to his specifications, as the great physician, and that he would loose them even retroactively from the first time any vaccination or medication was even taken. Loose them, Heavenly Father, Lord, from any negative effects, special effects, side effects, hexes, spirit spells, curses, chemicals, or ingredients that you as the great physician, Lord Jesus, would not use, prescribe, or agree with. And bind in the name of Jesus, Lord, to their medications and vaccinations, that they shall bless and add no sorrow with them. In Jesus' name. He said, whatsoever you bind or loose on earth. That's what the word says. Whatsoever. He didn't say accept anything. Instead of doing so much signifying and lip boxing with me. Some of you. Some of y'all got so some of you got so scared and you you so gripped by fear you lost your sound mind and you ain't got no power in not exercising none. Sister Rebecca Walker says, concerning my last prayer request about my mom's heart attack, she's doing well. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a praise report. Also, another praise report. She says, Thank you, Lord, for some balance tonight. She says, I caught my 15-year-old daughter reading the Bible on her own. Best gift a mom could ask for. So blessed. Thank you so much, Sister Rebecca Walker. God bless you. And God bless your daughter, too. We ask in the name of Jesus because that old devil. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would keep her surrounded in a hedge of protection in Jesus' name. Loose angels that you have assigned to watch over her, to bear her up, lest she dash her foot against the stone. And also loose ministering angels, Lord, to minister to her in Jesus' name, Lord. Bind to her the seven spirits of the Lord from Isaiah 11 and 2. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory. And Father, bind to her the whole full armor of God, Lord. 
And in the name of Jesus, let nothing breach into that hedge of protection, Lord God of glory, that would try to turn her in another direction. In Jesus' name, we touch and agree. And I touch and agree with all the prayers in the chat for our loved ones tonight. In Jesus' name, all of the righteous prayers. Wasn't that, wasn't that beautiful? We've just got a, a few more. I thank you all for being patient and dutiful. Okay, for for Israel. Okay, let me read all of this. Okay, okay, before I get to the point, I want to talk about some strange dreams I've been having that will lead to the point. It's shorter than it sounds like it's going to be. Just for those who are anxious to get in that bed and give in to the fleshly desire of sleep. I, I, I. No, the Lord promises sweet sleep. Psalm 4 and 8 and Proverbs 3 and 24. Okay. So I've had some dreams where I was usually semi-aware, but I knew something was always off with these dreams. And in the end of them, something always attacked me from behind. And then I would feel paralyzed. Then I'd wake up. Now, my last dream was similar, but very different at the same time. In my sleep, I had strange dreams, a bit sexual, not gay, though. But at the end of my dreams, I felt something very warm and wet. Okay. And I felt paralyzed for a bit. And then I woke up with the same sensation. It felt like it was still there. Okay. This seems spiritual. And I've heard of spiritual rape before, if that's how you call it. I'm letting you know this because I'd like to know why exactly this happened. Could you pray for me? I talked to my sister about it, and we think we know why this happened. Well, you and your sister probably have a better indication of what the root of that is than I do. I could give you some examples of how those things have happened to people before, opening up doors through uh, pornography, fornication, impure thoughts. But most uh, most likely, this is a this is a, a succubus or incubus spirit. Um, the spirit of sexual perversion. Um, these spirits come in through doors that are related to lust, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, and that are related to um, opening up your gates. That it could be your eye gates or your ear gates. You might, you may have not looked at anything pornographic, but even listening to certain songs you know if you listen to WAP it's pornographic words so you know you can listen to some music and also allow for your ear gates to be breached so Lord we just ask in the name of Jesus that you would please guard guard the gates of your servant Israel guard the gates of his eyes of his ears of his mind, of his heart. Guard his sexual gates in Jesus' name, Lord, guide. And um, cleanse his mind with the blood of Jesus, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over his mind in Jesus' name, over his thoughts, over his will, emotions, imagination, intellect, over his subconscious and conscious thoughts, and over his memory. Sometimes it's things from the memory that the that, that old adversary will dig up and try to bring back to your remembrance some old foul foolishness that you had really forgotten. So, Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name that you would cast down, cast down imaginations and bring all thoughts under captivity and submission to the will of Christ. In the name of Jesus and the power of his name. We touch and agree. And we call it done. Amen and amen. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you won't let this happen to him again. Bind up any succubus or incubus, any spirit associated with point A in Jesus' name, Lord. Any spirit, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, of night paralysis, sleep paralysis, night terror, sleep terror. Every seizing spirit in Jesus' name from the very root, Lord, in every Spirit associated with those thoughts and imaginations that need to be cast down and brought under captivity, Lord. We ask that you would bind up these things, Heavenly Father, Lord, and any spirit that's responsible for what 
Israel described, bind it up in the name of Jesus and everlasting and breakable chains, cast it out and cast it down into the pit of the abyss in flames or wherever Lord Jesus Christ says it belongs in Jesus name. We touch and agree. We ask and we call it done. Amen and amen. And for our sister Danielle, Sister Minister Danielle, who has um, been experiencing some strange things concerning her car. She says, praise to the most high. She says, I pray that you are highly favored and blessed in Jesus name. She says, I pray that you're always comforted. John 14 and 26. I thank you. For your prayers, our dear little sister in Christ, who has been such a joy and a blessing to hear from, as it's rare that you get to see when God is newly working in somebody's life, and you get to see them go from zero to a hundred. And I'm thankful to have had a chance to see that, and I thank all of you who were instrumental in that system, Mr. T. Um. Sister Nisa and others, we thank you all for your prayers for our sister Danielle. She says, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Oh, okay. She says, I'm under attack, specifically my car, which is how I get back and forth to work. This is, this is the car that... Um, the Lord changed from her dwelling place to her mode of transportation to and from an, a, a, a good job. She says, this is the second week this has happened. I'm making a police report after work. Yes. And I, I encouraged her to do everything in the physical as well as to ask for help in the spiritual. And I've been praying for her. But now we can get the benefit of corporate prayer. She also says, she says, my car has been running a bit funny. She sent me some pictures. It looked like somebody's been tampering with her vehicle. She says, my car has been running a bit funny. The first week, my driver door was keyed. This morning, I noticed what you see in the photos. A piece was cut off and melted to the back where it's severely scratched. When I enter my key, there's a bit of resistance. The handle is broken and more big scratches on the passenger side door. She says, I'm not sure what or who is doing this, but I need prayer and protection. I think I know who it is, but after I do the report, I'll have a better idea and surveillance footage. She said, I'm so tired and I've been patient and prayerful. So if the prayer warriors could help out, that would be great. And so prayer warriors, I ask that you would lift up our sister Danielle in your prayers. And Lord, we ask that you would cut and sever any ungodly soul ties in Jesus' name, Lord. Loose her from any shackle and any tether, any individual, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, that's not sent into her life from you. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would cause for them to be as far away from her as the east is from the west at the furthest most points. And Lord, we ask that you would set a sword down between her and any of the adversary's assignments against her life and any agents that the adversary is using to carry out those assignments in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would please place a hedge of protection around her vehicle. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Touching and agreeing right on time and in sync with Brother Reg. And Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you would allow for the angels that you have assigned to watch over her. Heavenly Father, Lord, to also watch over the things that you made her a steward over in Jesus name, including and especially the vehicle that she needs to get to and from her place of employment in the name of Jesus. We want to touch and agree. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would please in the name of Jesus, Lord, Speak to the heart and the mind of who it, whoever uh, is behind this, if it is indeed who she thinks that it is in Jesus' name. 
or whoever it is in the name of Jesus, Lord, speak to their heart and to their mind and let them know that she's yours. And if they know what's good for them, they'll leave her and hers alone in the name of Jesus. We touch an agreement and we call it done. Amen. And thank you, Brother Randall Terry, for your consideration of, of uh, support. Uh, for those who are interested in supporting this ministry, however the Lord may lead you, you can find that information in the description box below this video. Okay, for our sister, Roselle416, four days ago, she said, I ask that you please pray for me right now. I am unemployed. I have no money saved, and my son's car is being held at a body shop. Until we pay them over four thousand dollars to get it back after they fixed it, are you serious? That's enough to get another one, ain't it? He must be driving new and shiny. He was in a minor car accident at work. What? And his job said it was his fault as well as the insurance company. Oh Lord, it's been sitting at the body shop since. Oh, it's been sitting there since April 26th, and they charge $60 a day. That is crazy. She says, I have nothing, $20 in my checking account, and five in my savings. I don't want to be evicted, have my car repossessed. I know God is able to do exceeding abundantly above that I ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, Lord. I ask that you touch and agree with me in faith that God will do the impossible in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you, Roselle, and God bless you too. And we touch and agree and we ask in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would set the crooked thing straight concerning her vehicle in the name of Jesus, Lord, and concerning this, this um, $4,000 bill. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that you don't you don't have to have money to turn a thing around. Lord, whatever it is that you would require to turn this thing around for her and set the crooked thing straight and to alleviate her concerns and worries about this very concerning situation. Lord, we just ask that you would provide it in Jesus name, Lord, provide Whatever it is that's needed in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, to solve this problem for our sister Roselle. In Jesus' name, we touch and agree. Amen. Okay. DeMario Porter. Okay, he's asking for prayer to cover Oh, okay, yes, okay Okay, DeMario has been doing a work In putting together a network That um, some of the brothers in the truth can use um, When they shut down this particular platform and I applaud his efforts, and I'm going to participate. So this was an email that he had sent for prayer for all who are um, involved in that fledgling effort. He says, I'm emailing to request prayer for us all. It seems as if Satan is busy with his attacks toward us lately. And this is a young brother who is able to do that. And I saw it, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be joining that and putting up that information shortly. He says, um, but I truly believe y'all is allowing it so that we can come together for no weapon formed against us shall prosper. He says, over the past week, I've been receiving subliminals from every corner, whether family or jobs where people are just using plays, attempting to get me to submit to these wicked devils. And when I confront them, they play crazy as if they don't know what I'm referring to. 
throwing rocks and binding their hands. I am truly at a heavy place, for I have nowhere to escape to. And last Thursday, my two-year-old nephew got shot in his right hand, which I believe is a sign to the family to leave me alone, since those directly involved have been trying to get me to sign to T.I. the Rapper. Yet the ordeal has been heavy on my heart, leading me to reach out to Bart Sutter and Lonnie Johnson, the ones behind all the subliminal attacks, which have been increasing since I pulled their streaming site months ago. On yesterday, I contacted one of them, and he continued to tell me how much he really cares about me. But he's having people, but he's sending people to give me hard times all around with their Masonic connections. He said, I've decided to take the day off for I feel the need to take a personal day while everyone is away at work. He says, I pray for you all as well and really didn't want to bother you all with this matter, but I really need the uplifting, as I know we all do at these times. Let me know if there's anything I can do to assist you throughout the day. Peace, y'all, favor, and love, family. So we just want to touch and agree for young Demario Porter, a young... Um, enterprising and industrious and intelligent brother who is receiving some backlash from the adversary as is apt to happen if you're doing something he doesn't like. But as he said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against Demario in judgment shall be condemned. So, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name that you would please surround Demario, the works of his hands and the projects that he's working on. In Jesus' name, Lord, with your hedge of protection. In Jesus' name, Lord, loose the angels that you have assigned to watch over him, to bear him up lest he dash his foot against a stone. Let no plague or pestilence come near his dwelling made of flesh and bone or his dwelling made of brick and stone. Or the things that you would allow for him to be a steward over, to be a vehicle in creating or to own in Jesus' name. And Lord, please, in, in the name of Jesus, Lord, keep him un, uh, hidden under the shadow of the protection of your wings. Bind up any plans or plots that the adversary or any brotherhood organization has against him in Jesus name Lord any agents that the adversary may use to come against him Heavenly Father Lord bind to them that they will be confused bind to them that they will be impotent bind to them that they will lose in Jesus name bind to them Heavenly Father Lord that they will be discomfited in Jesus name and Heavenly Father Lord restore him and give him the victory in the name of Jesus we touch and agree And I touch and agree with all prayers in the chat for DeMario in Jesus' name. Y'all remember DeMario. He's doing a good work. He's doing something that we will all be able to take advantage of. Amen. Lord. Mm -hmm. Sister Michelle B. Okay. She says, <clears throat> Hello, Brother Theo. You're one of my absolute favorite brothers in Christ on YouTube. Thank you also for sharing the five-hour video recently with the guy who spoke on Freemasons. Such a sick world we live in. While well, I am still seeking prayers, I was sent an arraignment for retail fraud in the state of Michigan. My pre-trial is June 30th. My everything has been so on fire for God, and the devil still caught up to me with my OCD insane bad decision to shoplift. I feel absolutely disgusted with myself. I have extreme remorse, regret, embarrassment, and overall hatred for what I have done. So you have 
asked the Lord for forgiveness and you have repented. She says, I have physical health problems and mental issues. I am asking for prayers again, only what I can endure and handle financially as well for the outcome. I believe in the power of prayers. I know I've been forgiven by God and we talk daily. I also would ask for, for prayers for peace of mind and to help with my OCD, ADD, anxiety, and depression. With tons of love and gratitude, Michelle. We give you tons of love back, Sister Michelle. And of course, we believe in the power of prayers. And we know that the Lord has heard your prayer petition. And as he has forgiven you, no one else has the right to accuse you for the accuser of our brethren has been cast down and it was done so by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so we ask in jesus name that you would bind up every spirit in the name of jesus of guilt in the name of jesus lord god of glory and every spirit of regret and remorse and embarrassment in jesus name and every spirit of heaviness lord trying to bear down on her and make her pay more than you have required for her to pay for what she's done in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we also ask, Lord, that you would be as her lawyer in the courtroom in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask for your grace and your mercy that endureth forever to be with her and that you would give her favor in the name of Jesus, Lord, and put favor in the hearts of all of those who are involved in meeting out whatever justice or whatever uh, decision or verdict or fines would be given to her in Jesus name and also shout out to my brother Vincent's son Michael and a shout out to um Anyone else who has been, you know, from um, from young nephew Jackson to sister Minister Rebecca and any and to um, brother Minister Ladarian and anyone who has been uh, challenged with um, OCD, ADD, anxiety, or depression, or with people speaking those words over them. Um, I know that it's the medical professions or the practice, the mental health practice that says that you should take ownership by saying my ADD, my OCD, my anxiety, my depression. These are spirits. You don't want to take ownership of them because you can't truly own them. But you can make an agreement where they can act as if they own you. These are spirits that you have struggled with. And we pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord would loose you from those spirits right now. Bind up each and every one of those spirits in everlasting and breakable chains. And cast each and every one of those spirits out of you in the name of Jesus. And bind to you 2 Timothy 1 and 7 power, love, and a sound mind. Depression is a deficiency of the joy of the Lord. Depression can be overcome through the garment of praise that lifts off the spirit of heaviness for all of your nights and your days. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. It's the spirit of repetition in the name of Jesus. We ask that it would be bound up and cast out in Jesus' name. Attention de deficit disorder. The inability to pay con to pay attention. That is the double mind in the name of Jesus. It, in, in times, it is the spirit of confusion in Jesus' name. And infirmity in the name of Jesus of the mind. Infirmity, not firm. To keep your mind on something is to be firm. So we ask that you would loose her from every infirmity of the mind. And anxiety is fear. We ask that you would loose her from fear in the name of Jesus, which is false evidence appearing real. And loose her, Heavenly Father, Lord God, away from that false evidence, Father, and give her the confidence of the blessed assurance in Jesus' name. And bind up. Anything, Heavenly Father, Lord, that comes against her ability to have the mind of Christ and the sound mind that you promised, Second Timothy 1 and 7, in the name of Jesus. 
Revelation Truth has an update to their prayer request. It says, Brother Theo, sadly, I lost my mama Susan on May 17th. They said, due to COVID pneumonia. I told the doctor to her face she was a liar about COVID. My mom never had any symptoms and was recovering well. Doctors told me she would be released in three days after a three-day stay. And overnight, everything changed, and now she had pneumonia. Was on a machine breathing for her overnight. Lord Jesus. My mother was fully loved by the father. Her proof is me, us, her legacy left behind. She ran a Christian daycare for over 20 years and touched multitudes of lives. God was so good to her. I praise him for his unending love to her. I am missing a major part of my world. But I seek for God to fulfill me and the whole in my and my daughter's hearts, aching for that beautiful lady we love. Please pray for us, Theo. We heard that the Father is our comfort, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And precious to the Lord is the death of his saints. I can't imagine a better gift than time with the Father, even for a microsecond. That doctor I told was a covered liar to her oh, pardon me. That doctor I told was a liar to her face. She asked me, what do I think my mother died from? I told her exactly what she said, pneumonia and the multitude of other diagnoses that she had had. That doctor said nothing to me, nothing. We all know the truth. Them, the med professionals, and me, it's a lie. Peace and blessings, Brother Theo. I need prayer for my open future. I'm at a crossroad in my life as my daughters are officially grown women. And I was mom's caretaker for a long time. And now I'm still a mom, but my purpose but my purpose is different now and oh so many changes. Thank you for taking time to read this and pray for us, for me. Thank you, and I'm here asking God to give me purpose in accordance to his will. All glory to God in the highest. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your unending mercy and love. We want to pray for our sister Revelation Truth, for her heart to be comforted. Lord, we want to ask that the comforter, the comforter be loosed and bound to her and that she be wrapped in that comforter in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also want to ask in the name of Jesus that you would please bind to her your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding and the perfect peace of one whose mind is stayed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, please minister to her throughout the night season and comfort her. Console her. And all who are grieving. And Heavenly Father, as she has acknowledged, she knows that Mama Susan is with you. And Lord, we just ask that you would heal her brokenheartedness in Jesus' name. Bind up her broken heart, Lord Jesus, as you had promised to do. You bind up the broken heart. And loose her from all heartache in the name of Jesus. And Lord, bring her to a place where, though she may not understand everything about your will, Bring her to a place where she has peace with it in the name of Jesus. Touch and agree.
And please do keep our loved ones who serve in the various branches of the armed forces in your prayers as they're doing some really different things in those branches. And and many who believe made the choice to serve. Some some of whom found the Lord after they signed up for service. Remember, everyone does not make the same choices that sends them down the same path, though we may all end up at the same destination. Lord willing, that's with the Lord. So, so for our sister Cherie, if y'all do remember, we've uh, prayed for her good friend, her sister, for all intents and purposes, Jazelle. And for for her beautiful baby, she said, "Please, um, please pray for Jazel, who's having a hard time, because her baby's father has relocated five hours away to China Lake, CA. She will have to drive from San Diego to do her visits with Alessa. I pray for her all the time, but it's hard to encourage her at times because of the deep sadness and depression. At times on the phone, all she does is cry. I feel like your prayers really did help over the years because CPS and the police are no longer involved. Our prayers have been heard in Jesus' name. Dealing with Alessa's father is the challenge. So we want to touch and agree for that first and foremost. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, just please lift up your daughter, Jazel, encourage her, Heavenly Father, Lord, give her strength and give her endurance. In Jesus' name, Lord God, of glory to do what she has to do to make sure that Alessa has a has as normal and healthy a relationship with her parents as is possible. In Jesus' name, Lord, make a way out of no way. Lord God of glory, five hours away is, a, is, is quite a commute and a very difficult thing to do regularly. So, Lord, we just ask that you would give her the strength, Heavenly Father, Lord. And if it be your will, move them closer together in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. Lord, for Alessa and Heavenly Father, Lord, touch that father's heart, Lord, and let him do all that he should do in Jesus' name and could do. To help make things easier on Jazel and their daughter. In the name of Jesus, we touch and agree. And Sister Cherie also says, please pray for my little Janique Holiday, Hockaday, pardon me, who has been on my heart. We are not that close because we didn't grow up together, but hopefully we can reconnect this summer. She's very close with her family. So, Lord, just please keep the Hockaday family intact. In Jesus' name, Lord, restore any breaches, Heavenly Father, Lord, in their relationship. In Jesus' name, Lord, let our sister Cherie, Lord, be able to reconnect with Janique in Jesus' name. And let your will be done. Heavenly Father, Lord, let her minister to Janique in Jesus' name, Lord. And let them build and solidify a relationship, Heavenly Father, Lord, founded upon you and your will for Janique's life, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11. They're moving our sister Sheree around a little taste and in some and in and into some places that. You know, you would be concerned about your sister being moved to as far as places on this earth that have been known for war. And I didn't want to tell too much more, but 
um, she shared with me some very interesting information about things that's happening um, to folks that serve and how they're closing up some bases that they've had operable since World War II and they're moving folks around to some hot spots, some places that, you know, things can jump off uh, in or things are more likely to jump off in at least from what we've learned historically. So just please keep her and our other service member loved ones in prayer in Jesus name I know you know folks don't always want that information disclosed but we have another very close sister in Christ that all y'all love here who also serves and you know we love her and and we just want her to be out of harm's way and, and that the Lord would just protect her supernaturally in Jesus name and all of our loved ones. And we want to pray for our sister, all eyes to see Christ, to be loosed from cancer. In the name of Jesus, Holy Father, Lord, guide her towards the things that she may be able to use, the things that she will be able to use, Lord, that would give her some relief from any pain or discomfort in Jesus' name. Loose her, Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory, from any cancerous cells in her body heal those cells in jesus name lord restore anything that the cancer is um causing any damage to in jesus name in her body mind or soul we ask these things heavenly father lord according to your will for her life lord and also for our beloved sister lady soul in jesus name lord who is about to undergo chemotherapy lord we just ask that your will would be done concerning her life in heavenly father we believe that you have never stopped being in the healing business and lord we just ask that you would heal our dear sister lady soul in jesus name heal our dear sister ginger in the name of jesus heavenly father lord let healing be poured out upon them in jesus name we touch and agree And I want to thank those who have uh, prayed for our brother Blake in his loving attempts to help his beloved friend Helen to understand Christ. They sat down together and they watched that five hour long video in 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 portions, of course. And, you know, which which is something I suggested because I know that when I was in a particular stage of belief. Or rather of unbelief. Once I was in a particular stage of unbelief where I was like, okay, I don't know too much about proving that this Christ thing is as the Christians say, but there's definitely something devilish going on. Once I got there, the Lord could could really work on me. And so I know that when I posted that, I knew that folks would say this and say that, but I also knew that if I had seen that when I was 25 years old, um, this wouldn't have been such a bumpy road. And I would have that that was what it would have taken for me to say, okay, why they hate Jesus so much and why are they so devilish? And that and, and that would have brought my if then logic to the most logical conclusion. And that's that Christ is real and Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord the Lord of Lords and the devil hate him hate him because he ain't him. And he hates us. Because we can do all things through him. Amen. So we want to encourage Brother Blake and Sister Helen. Keep them in your prayers. Let them know. Or rather let the Lord know that 
You are indeed standing in the gap for them. As the Lord said, that it is his will that none should perish. It is our will that none should perish. And Lord, and we also want to pray for Sister Rebecca in the name of Jesus, Lord, um, and that the Lord would, would continue to guide her as she had been experiencing the seizures. If you recall, we've prayed for her a few times. Um, the seizures would at first only be something that would come on her while she was laying down asleep and and she had even slept through some of them but as of late she had two instances where she was in the kitchen standing and fell and one of them woke up you know to water spilling on the floor from the water running where she had been standing there washing dishes. And it's just her and her beloved companion, her cat, Panda. And we just pray that the Lord would watch over them both. She loves the Lord. She does ministry work from her home. She's been struggling with um, the wrong medication. And she's been overcoming depression and heaviness. She's also been experiencing some, some soreness. Um, some of which was caused after her fall. And then some may be, may be related to, to some residual side effects from having received her shots so she's nervous and a bit scared that these seizures may come back or that the medication that she's just um, been taken off of you know was contributing to the medication uh, pardon me the medication was contributing to the seizures and she's been taken off of that medication so we just want everything that, that um, she's doing to be a benefit and a blessing that adds no sorrow with it and, and th that the Lord would loose her from convulsions and seizures or, or what we know of as seizures. Bind up those things from the root. Bind up any seizing spirits or anything that contributes to that experience happening to her. Bind it up from the very root and pluck it out. Keep it bound and cast it out and cast it down. And don't let it return to her again. Let her be free from that experience in the name of Jesus. And loose her, Heavenly Father, from any side effects in the name of Jesus or soreness in the name of Jesus, Lord. Any nausea in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. Any soreness or stiffness in her hands or fingers in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. And loose her from resignation in the name of Jesus and heaviness and despondency and every spirit of defeatism in Jesus name and every spirit associated with heaviness in Jesus name and every spirit that compromises her happiness in the name of Jesus Lord and bind to her the joy of the Lord a merry heart keep her lamp filled with the oil of joy and gladness and bind to her the garment of praise in Jesus name and loose her heavenly father Lord from anything Lord that would keep her from having sweet sleep and they would keep her from feeling comfortable and secure in her own home. In Jesus' name. We touch and agree and we call it done. Amen. Please, please do keep her in your prayers. She loves the Lord. That's why I get so ticked off by folks that want me to speak condemnation over folks that have gotten the sting. Though I will never get the sting. I don't believe in anything that they promise you is going to help you. But some people have to try something. Some people don't know the things that we claim to know or don't believe the things that we claim to believe. So they may take some medication. They may accept a vaccination. And that does not mean that God's going to separate his love from them. 
It is stupid to think so. Everybody ain't me. Some of y'all go to the doctor and you get checkups. I ain't been to the dentist since I was 14 years old. I don't mess with none of that. But that does not make me holier than you. That doesn't mean that I'm guaranteed a spot in the kingdom and you not. So please do keep folks in your prayers who make different choices than you do that love the Lord too. So with that being said, I want to end with a general prayer, the cover all prayer, the prayer to hopefully to cover anything and everything that folks might be dealing with in Jesus name. And I would like if you would touch and agree with me in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. So, Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, Father, that you would please forgive us for our sins, Lord. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory, for being self-centered and self-absorbed. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, Lord, for not remembering the burdens of others. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, Lord, for not being able to understand the different plights and challenges that folks may face. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, Lord, for any form of self-righteousness and being lost in our own concerns and being unable to exercise the power that you've given us to help those who may be weak or weaker or shut in or in need. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, for not being Christ-like when it counts the most. And Lord, help us to be more Christ-like in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. So Lord, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, Father, that you would please hear our prayer petition, Lord, on behalf of of all who would touch and agree and all who would benefit from these prayers in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. Lord, please, in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, loose us, Heavenly Father, from unforgiveness, from stiffness linked to unforgiveness, arthritis and arthritic symptoms, from soreness and stiffness, in our minds, in our thinking, in our body, in our soul. Loose us from soreness and stiffness, Heavenly Father, Lord, in our joints, in our tendons, in our ligaments, in our muscles, in our bones. Loose us from soreness and stiffness, Heavenly Father, Lord, in our fingers, our toes, in our hands, our feet, in our arms, in our legs, in our elbows, or in our knees, in our shoulders, in our neck. Anywhere, Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory, where we are immovable in Jesus name Lord or where moving is difficult and hurtful to us when we need to move in Jesus name loose us from that soreness and that stiffness mind body soul and brain and Lord loose us heavenly father Lord from heartache and heartbreak broken heartedness heart attack stroke seizure embolism angina afib constriction congestion indigestion GERD heartburn heart murmurs blood clots constriction of blood flow to it from the brain or to it from the heart or to it from the arteries loose us from heart disease diabetes weight gain hair loss trembling drooling memory loss nightmares negative thoughts fear anxiety worry panic pain overreaction exaggeration loose us from offense Loose us from false burden. Loose us, Heavenly Father, from false sense of self, false identity, lost sense of self, lost identity. Loose us from being offended. Loose us from defense and being defensive. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from any trauma 
from trauma-based mind control, from MK Ultra, from torment and tormenting thoughts, and from the tormentor. Cast down imaginations and bring thoughts under captivity to the will of Christ and every spirit associated with them. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from any form of any of these things, wherever they may be found, disassociation, dissociative identity disorder, multiple personality disorder and multiple personalities, alter personality disorder and alter personalities, schizophrenia, paranoia, anxiety, depression, bipolar, mental illness of any kind, being diagnosed with, with mental illness, insecurity or guilt or shame concerning mental illness, OCD, ADD, or anything being spoken over our mind in Jesus' name, Lord, to influence us or to cause for us to believe that we don't have a sound mind. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from any chips or any implants, any ritual abuse, satanic ritual abuse, mind control of any kind. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory. From any association with, curse or hex from, or mind control associated with, Freemasonry, Eastern Stars, Rosicrucians, the Jesuits, the Boule, any brotherhood or sisterhood, fraternity or sorority. Loose us, Heavenly Father, from any oath taking, and any who have taken the oath, on our behalf, or implicated us in their oath-taking. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from defiance, denial, rebellion, witchcraft, sorcery, ancestral, generational, familial, or familiar, curses, hexes, spirits, or spells going all the way back to the beginnings of our generations. Loose us from any agreements made knowingly or unknowingly with the gods of pagans. Loose us from frustration, impatience, agitation, aggravation, and irritation. Loose us from any haze, daze, illusion, confusion, delusion, or hallucination. Lift a, loose us from any shifting of the room, any spiritual veil or blinders placed over our eyes or mind, any spirits assigned to make us spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, or otherwise blind, any spirits of Shalbri, Riasmodius, Ganesh, the Tiros, the Deros, or any other spirits that would come against our body, soul, or mind. Lucis from the succubus, the incubus, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the waster, the destroyer, the accuser, any spirits to try to make us feel like a loser, any spirits of abuser of the abuser, any spirits of worthlessness or unworthiness, any spirits of fear or fright of the violent man, or fear or fright of things that go bump in the night, or fear or fright of the pestilence, the arrow, the destruction, or the plague that cometh by day, noon, day, or night. Lucis from anything that causes for us to have fear for our safety in Jesus' name, Lord. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from any hag or hedge witch or any pinning down spirits, any strangling spirits, any choking spirits, any straddling spirits, any spirits of night terror, night paralysis, sleep terror or sleep paralysis, any spirits of python or boa in Jesus' name, Lord, or any spirits associated with Coma, stroke, or seizure in Jesus' name, or coma, stroke, or seizure like symptoms. Loose from anything that would cause for us, Lord, to have convulsions, or to fall suddenly, or to faint, or to bite our tongue or the inside of our cheek, or to clench our teeth. Any spirits that would cause for us to become incontinent in the middle of our sleep, or to scream out in the middle of our sleep. Or any spirits that would interfere with sweet sleep, or interfere with normal breathing patterns. Any spirits of sleep apnea or apnea. Or any spirits that would interfere with our normal heart rate. Looses from nightmares and mare in Jesus' name. Sleeplessness, restlessness, insomnia, and amnesia in Jesus' name. Looses from tormenting thoughts and tormenting memories while we're trying to sleep in the name of Jesus, Lord. Looses from lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, respect of persons, and idolatry, and fantasy lust in Jesus' name. Looses, Heavenly Father, from pornography and masturbation in the name of Jesus. Looses, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory. From any and every unclean and ungodly spirit and unclean and ungodly thoughts that open up the doorways to bring in those spirits in the name of Jesus, bind them up in everlasting and breakable chains and any and every spirit that you know keeps us from being healed and free. Keep them bound in everlasting and breakable chains and cast them out, cast them down and cast them away from all who would touch and agree in the name of Jesus. And Lord, please loosen and bind to us the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, to wash us white as snow and wash away from us anything that needs to go. And Lord, please loosen and bind to us in the name of Jesus, Lord, the, the comfort of the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit of John 14 and 26. 
Let it bring all things that Jesus Christ has said back to our remembrance. And Lord, please also loose and then bind to us in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, the precious balm in Gilead. Lord, and bind it to anything in any part of us where anything is missing or lacking or broken or bruised or battered or fragmented, fractured, split, shattered or splintered. Anything that needs to be repaired, restored, refreshed, fixed, healed or renewed. Lord, please repair, restore, refresh, fix, heal and renew us like the eagle's wings concerning all needful things in Jesus name. And Lord, we also ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would please loose and then bind to us your supernatural, miraculous, and instantaneous healing as found in John chapter 9, where you even gave sight to a man who was born blind. You're no respecter of persons. The same things you did for that man, you'll do for us and that much more. We have not because we ask not and we do not ask amiss. So, Lord, we ask that you would please grant us this. And, Lord, please loose and then bind to us anything that we've been missing since birth that would make us whole for all of our days on this earth according to your Jeremiah 29 and 11 plans for our lives. And, Lord, please loose and then bind to us your supernatural, miraculous, and instantaneous healing and deliverance like you gave to the man in the tombs and the Gadarenes in Luke chapter 8, verse 33. Open up the prison to them that are bound and set the captives free. Loose us from all bondage, imprisonment, and captivity, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and otherwise, in Jesus' name. Loose us from every bond, every cord, every fetter, every shackle, and every chain that is like those that kept that man in bondage, in Jesus' name. Loose us from any legion, in Jesus' name, for any reason. Loose us, Heavenly Father, from any spirits of withdrawal or withdrawing from loved ones. O oh, loved ones withdrawing from us. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from any spirits of resignation, resignation from life, suicide, death, hell, and the grave. Depression, heaviness, desolation, loneliness, isolation, desperation, despair, despondency, defeatism, disappointment, abandonment, rejection, resentment, bitterness, bitter root judgment. Anger, hard-heartedness, rage, retaliation, revenge, avengement, vengeance, and grudge. And any spirits that need to leave us for us to be free, that refuse to budge, bind them up in everlasting and breakable chains, Lord, with your mighty right hand of righteousness. And cast them out and cast them down in the power and authority of Jesus' mighty matchless holy name. Lord, please loose and then bind to us Psalm 23, Psalm 91 and Ephesians 6 and all of the promises and protections therein. Please lead us beside the still waters. Maketh us to lie down in green pastures and restore our souls. Let us know that you are our shepherd so we shall not want for anything. Please loose and then bind to us in the name of Jesus and the power of his name. Psalm 91 and all the promises and protections within it. Loose the angels that you have assigned to watch over us and bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. And let no plague or pestilence come near our dwelling made of flesh and bone or our dwelling made of brick and stone. And Lord, please loosen and bind to us the whole full armor of Ephesians 6. Bind to that whole full armor impenetrability and let it never deplete. And please bind the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to us into that whole full armor from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And please bind that same type of hopeful armor to those angels that you have assigned to watch over us. Loose them right now to go to us and to surround us and link arms around us like bodyguards and protect us. And our dwellings made of flesh and bone as well as our dwellings made of brick and stone. Everything that you've made us a steward over and allowed for us to own, including our pets. And let those angels be with us everywhere we roam, inside or outside the home, to protect us from things seen and unseen and all things unclean, known and unknown. And let them protect our mind, body, and soul, and our spirit, man, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name that you would please loose and then bind to us 1 Corinthians 13, love, and the seven spirits of the Lord told in Isaiah 11 and 2. Let us first and foremost feel that love and those seven spirits flowing and emanating from you. And then let us be a vessel that that love and those seven spirits always flows freely through. 
And let us recognize and realize when you send that love and those seven spirits through others to be a blessing for us too. In Jesus' name. When it's in accordance with your will. And Lord, we also ask in Jesus' name that you would please loose and then bind to us the joy of the Lord, which is our strength and restoration now and always. The oil of joy and gladness. And let it wash away all sadness and madness. And keep our lamp filled with the oil of joy and gladness. And Lord, please bind to us the garment of praise to lift off the spirit of heaviness for all of our nights and our days. And bind to us a merry, merry heart to do our bodies good like a medicine. And bind these things to us in billion-fold portions every millisecond. And Lord, please loosen and bind to us 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Power, love, and a sound mind to us. Oneness with the mind of Christ. Your perfect peace that surpass all understanding. Your perfect love that casts out all fear. Philippians 4 and 8. Positive thoughts and the perfect peace of one whose mind is stayed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, please loose and then bind to us, over us, under us, around us, and surround us with a greater hedge of protection than you gave to your servant Job in Job chapter 1 verse 10. Except we ask that you don't let anything that would harm us or come against us be able to penetrate and get in. And anything that's in there with us that should not be. Lord, we ask that you would loose us from it, Lord. Cause for us to be made free. Loose that thing, whoever it needs to be. And please bind to our protective hedge and protective ceiling, foundation, floors, walls, and roof, and seal it all with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make it airtight. And Lord, we ask that you would loose a Holy Spirit fire wall of protection as high, far, and wide as the eye can see to cover and protect us from every direction. And seal it. With a protective ceiling, foundation, floors, walls, and roof. And with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, seal it and make it airtight. And we ask that you do all of these things according to your will for our lives. Which is that we live and not die. That we prosper, even that our souls may prosper. And that you give us a hope and a future. And a good expected end according to your plans for us in Jeremiah 29 and 11. And that we be in good health in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask these things also in accordance with your word. In Matthew 7 and 7, Matthew 18 and 18 through 18 and 20, Matthew 21 and 22, Isaiah 55 and 11, Numbers 23 and 19, Luke chapter 8 verse 33, and John chapter 9, just to name a few. We ask that you abide these scriptures and these prayers and all of the promise and protections within them, but most importantly, bind your word and all of your promises in your word to provide for us, to protect us, to heal us, and to deliver us. And bind these promises and the proof that these promises have been kept. Lord, to all of us who would touch and agree, for all for whom we pray for often and fervently, for our sister Kim, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, for Brother Pat, in Jesus' name, a.k.a. Brother Joshua in Jesus' name. For Sister Minister Rebecca, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. For Sister Natalie, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. For Sister Tricia Oates, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord. For little nephew Caleb and his mom, in the name of Jesus. And for any who would touch and agree. Lord, we ask that you would bind these prayers to all that we've named in Jesus' name, Lord, to their food, to their drink, to their medications, to their vaccinations, to anything that they've taken in through their gates and everything that comes out of their gates too, and to their minds, wills, emotions, imagination, intellect, to their subconscious, conscious thoughts, to their memory, to them mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually and physically and let them remain healed and whole continuously and continually perpetually in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and as you are the great physician greater than a great pharmacist psychologist psychiatrist or therapist please Lord we make all medications and vaccinations that any of your children have taken and we make them according to your specifications in Jesus name even retroactively from the first time anywhere ever taken in Jesus' name. 
and, and loose your children and any aforementioned medications or vaccinations from any negative effects, special effects, side effects, hexes, spirits, spells, chemicals, curses, ingredients, nanobots, luciferase, aborted tissues, anything that you as the great physician would not use, prescribe, or agree with. And bind to those medications or vaccinations that they can only bless and add no sorrow with them. And they can only be vessels through which rest, restoration, peace of mind, healing, and wellness can flow. And as you are the great physician and you understand the importance of rest to our healing, please loosen and bind to us Psalm 4 and 8 and Proverbs 3 and 24, sweet sleep and the knowledge that you maketh us to dwell in safety only. Let that knowledge, Lord, be our underpinning and underlining thoughts when we're asleep and when we're awake. And Lord, please also bind to us when we lay down to rest sweet dreams along with those thoughts that you make us, make us dwell in safety only and along with that sweet sleep. And let it all culminate and equal out into a blessed rest. Let us wake up at your appointed time, rejuvenated and refreshed, filled with your zeal and your zest, feeling our very best, knowing that we're highly favored and blessed, ready to receive love, joy, peace, and happiness, and pass any test and claim the victory in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We ask that these prayers will reach your ears like a Holy Ghost pillar of fire and flame unhindered. And we ask, Lord, that these prayers would come back down answered. Proof that your promises have been kept unhindered in Jesus' mighty matchless holy name. We touch and agree in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son. And we do indeed call it done. Amen and amen. Touch and agree. God bless you, everyone, every one of the 250 people that's still here tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. I thank you. I thank you if you did indeed strike that like tonight. And stay tuned for the next announcement. I will be doing another um, live stream very soon. I'm going to surprise you. But you can count on me Friday nights and Saturday nights going forward. There will be a surprise bonus night. So just stay tuned and I will send out the notification so everybody can be ready and waiting in Jesus name. God bless you all and good night. 335 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1235 a.m. Pacific. And I thank you all. For your enduring and patient hearts. Seventh Ward Creole, my brother Rich, Be a Tree, Big Nephew Ned, Big Nephew Zach Rains, God is Not a Racist, Sister Nicole, Brother Jordan, Isaac, Yaz General, Lion of Judah, Lamb of God, Read Romans 10, Christy H. Sister Stephanie P. from the D is in the place to be. Sister Leslie E. Thank you all for touching in the green. The latter rain. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Melody's child and key. Always a blessing to see you. And yes, you really should reach out to Brother Ranch. I forgot I was going to put Melody's child in in key on front street and play some of her music she's got she's got some good stuff no joke i was i was very impressed i really liked what you sent um and i'm hard to impress when it comes to this music stuff it's in my blood sister kanga kong can't go wrong with kanga kong so good to see you here sister and voice it with chrissy lacole is in the house good to see you and good night to our beloved sister cookie cruncher in the house Without a doubt. And MJ, thank you for being here. And if I missed you, I wasn't trying to dish you. I'll catch you on the coming back around. 
in Jesus name. Good night. All praise is due to the living and true. We need forgiving if we're living and not living for you. A Christian witness with relentless sentences like a javelin traveling They've distances. Been babbling, babbling sisters. But I haven't Rappers are glistening like the infants just lathered in vassal. Just a shining cause you let Lucifer slither and paddle with. We gon' get it on cause we don't get along so we battle Had you in saber strike distance Since it's intense then the intent is dismantling Wrestling devil challenge your business Our father's handling father Jacob Isaac and Alfred Which is disrespecting not gon' slide off like lanolin We disconnecting your channel and halogen Jesus the Christ is the only light with all blessing No sorrow no stress in the mall He'll make it a leader no more stress in the bar Top contender, he's the champ. Invite him in your heart. He'll put that spark on your lamp and enlighten any dark spaces and paths that you embark on. Places, foundations, and bases. New endeavors that you start on. He's pilot, so I'm defending his name like an Israelite with the mic. The king is the Christ with no shame, and they lied to you about the J, because Jesus is his name. Gang recognized game, and oh yes, yeah, so fresh and burnt bronze flesh, he sure came. With my bones and muscles aching, but I'm on the verge of breaking with every chance I'm taking. When my soul and heart start aching, though so many bonds need breaking, and when peace of mind is taken, from the ground I stand on shaking. With the earth foundation quaking with every move I'm making In your presence I'm shaking In my suits and boots I'm quaking My formation where we make it
Without the Lord, I couldn't catch up, cut the mustard or the relish. Went from helpless to selfless, from jealous to zealous. Anointed and appointed, separated and consecrated. Glad I made it, got so faded. In my youth, I oscillated and postulated. Attention bill got so great, it would've got cut off and God not paid it. I circumcised my heart, hard and waited. With a clean one, he placed it and traded. The unclean with a right spirit, he gave it. Attested, turned to a testament, said, John might hear who gave it. Do a break. Well, surrender. Let him break on you. And he'll take you. And we make you bind up and cast away the fake you. And then he'll take you. And we make you bind up and cast away the fake you. Cast away the fake you. That new stuff, hip hop, 